There's a new name for Toyota in Lanarkshire. From one of the UK's biggest names in motor retail. Macklin Motors Toyota opens this October in Hamilton. We're bringing you everything Toyota backed by first class service. So come and view the stunning new Toyota range, all with up to 10 years warranty. Including the Igo Cross and the new Yaris Cross compact SUV. See our great choice of approved used Toyotas. Our formidable range of commercial vehicles, including the Hilux. Get expert servicing from our manufacturer trained technicians. And special advice from our motability team. Macklin Motors Toyota opens Monday, October the 17th at Whistlebury Road, Hamilton. The Go Radio Football Show with MacklinMotors.com representing some of the biggest motoring manufacturers across Scotland. Let's go! Good afternoon from me, Paul Cooney, alongside the legend John Hartson. Also, Stephen McGinn is with us and we are coming live from the Go Radio Football Show with Macklin Motors, and we are at the Radisson Red in Glasgow for Euronites in association with Steen. A hundred years to the day since Jock Steen was born, the greatest ever manager in Scottish football, one of the greatest ever Celtic players is alongside me, John Hartson. John, how are you feeling about this tonight? Champions League is so special. Yeah, they are. We're back in it, of course, having had uh, several years out, and... Uh, it's a great competition to be involved in, um, and I think tonight I have a sneaky feeling that you know we'll do well in Germany tonight. I think uh, our Champions League form has already been great. I think we, we were the better team against Real Madrid. Unfortunate not to have gone in um, in the lead. I thought we dominated you know long periods of the first half. Ultimately, Real Madrid showed their class. We, we, we dropped off a level or two in the second half. I was doing the game against Shakhtar. I thought in the second half we controlled the football match. We missed several chances. Should have beaten Shakhtar Donetsk. In the two games that we've played, we've, we've only got a point. We come up against a Leipzig team tonight that have lost both games in the Champions League. They're 11th in the Bundesliga. They've got some really exciting players, but they don't frighten me, Paul. You know, it's not, it's not as if it's a, it's a fixture. I think to myself, well, they're top of the Bundesliga. They're not. They've not won a game yet out of the two. And they'll want to obviously get off to, you know, they'll want to get some points. The fact is they're home tonight against Celtic. They will be looking at that from a Leipzig point of view. They'll think we have to go and win this one because the next game will be at Celtic Park. So for me, Leipzig don't frighten me. Um, and, and I just think I just got a sneaky feeling that we'll get something tonight. It's going to be a massive night, isn't it, Stephen? You, uh, you'll be at the game next week. You will be at the game at home. Tonight, do you think Celtic will take something from this? You know, I was really worried about the game um, at three o'clock. But since I've come into uh, the hotel and spoke to Big John, uh, I'm a little more positive about it. You know, uh, Bit of a team talk? Yeah, yeah. The injuries to Carter Vickers, uh, Starfield and Abada, I thought it was really hard for a team to, to be losing their two first-choice centre-halves. So, um, but John's positivity, I, I think they've got a much better chance than they did at three o'clock. I bet you're glad you joined the Go Radio Football Team show because... You scored two goals at the weekend for the first time in... When's the last time you scored? Yeah, 13 years ago. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> scored a double against Kilmarnock. Um, so, yeah, it's actually the worst I've played after that this season. You know, I spent 70 minutes chasing, chasing my hat-trick. Was that in your mind you thought, I'm going to... Have you ever scored a hat-trick? Never, never. Yeah. Never will. That was my one chance. Uh, 70 minutes I had to get it and yeah. I couldn't get it. John, there, yeah, you can touch John there just to see for next week, maybe if that rubs off on you. <laughs> John, did you ever chase a, a hat-trick when you were on two? Uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a great story for me. Um, I, I'd scored in four consecutive derbies against Rangers, and there was only John Collins and the great uh, Jinky Johnson who have done that in the history. And, uh, and I was going for the record on my own. And we actually, we actually won the game 3 0 at Celtic Park. And I walked into the dressing room. Martin O'Neill had actually brought me off after about 65 minutes. And I was going for the record, the only person to ever do it in the Celtic shirt, five consecutive goals in five consecutive derbies. Um, so he brought me off. So I went straight down the tunnel. I've got the ump, although we went in 3-0, thinking a big selfish, me individual, thinking of myself. So the boys have come in. Everybody's high-fiving each other. We're all, you know, Billy, Billy Connolly's in there, Rod Stewart's in there. We're all enjoying the celebrations. So Martin's gone to me. He says, what's the matter with you? And I went, well, why did you bring me off for? He said, John, he said, because every now and again, son, he said, you've got to be able to run around. He said, and you just weren't running around today. And you were looking for the record on your own. 
and I went, fair enough. You know, the gaffer's always right. Yep. So, um, but no, I had a similar experience yep. myself when I was being a little bit selfish, not thinking of the team, and uh, you know. But there we, I was, I was soon put in my place by the gaffer. I'll tell you, if someone was chasing a hat trick tonight in the Green World, you would be absolutely delighted. It's going to be a massive game. RB Leipzig against Celtic, Champions League. It's game three. Celtic did so well against Real Madrid. They should have scored a couple. Okay, they lost 3-0 in the night, but they got all the plaudits. Uh, Rangers have found it tough in all three games. Uh, Celtic got the draw the other week uh, against Shakhtar, and tonight looking for the points. It was tough for Rangers last night, wasn't it? And 2-0, Alan McGregor uh, was outstanding for them, and he was probably the difference. That scoreline looked as though, Stephen, it was going to be maybe 4-5. or five. Yeah, well, going into that game, uh, any of these tough European games, you need your goalie to be good. Yeah. But Rangers, Alan McGregor was good to, to stop them getting a real hiding. Um, Rangers didn't really park the bus, didn't really go for it. It was a bit of an in-between performance. And thanks to the greatness of Alan, Alan McGregor, it kept the score down. Certainly did. He is some keeper, isn't he? What did you think of the Rangers' performance last night at Anfield, John? At, you know, a ground you know so well, and you gave so many people here in the Radisson Red with Steen uh, one of their greatest moments in 2003. I thought it was always going to be a really tough fixture. You know, Liverpool were looking to, to, to hit back after the 3 3 draw against Brighton at the weekend. Well, they weren't great. They went 2 0 down in the game. Then they, got, then they came back and they were winning 3 2, and then they got pegged back again. So I think they felt they might have owed something to their supporters. Very difficult to go to Anfield European nights under the lights. We achieved an unbelievable result there, but forget that for now. I just felt that it was always going to be tough. Um, Liverpool started like, a, like, a, like an absolute train, didn't they? Alan McGregor maybe kept the score down. And then, to be fair, the Rangers in the second half, I thought they made a few substitutions. And, and they, they showed a bit of quality themselves. You know, I think when, when uh, Fashion Sakala came on, he had an opportunity to score. Um, so they pushed on towards the end of the game, but I think it was a little bit late for them by then. But Rangers have got the group of death, in my opinion. You know, Napoli, uh, you look at the result, that the way they played against Ajax away. Strangely enough, <laughs> Napoli put six on Ajax last night, mm. in Amsterdam, by the way. Um, and now they play Liverpool back-to-back, -back, which is tough. Um, but the, the atmosphere at Ibrox, the way that the Rangers showed last season in the Europa League, some of the teams they beat, they had no right to, you know, to perform the way they did. Um, so they'll feel a little bit more confident going into the home game. They, they'll have the crowd behind them. Um, but that game now becomes so important next Wednesday for uh, next Tuesday. But I think yeah. it might be Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, when Liverpool have to go to Ibrox. That's right. Yes, Wednesday for Rangers at Ibrox, yeah. Celtic Tuesday against Leipzig. If you're just tuning in, that's not Gina McKee. You know those wonderful Welsh tones of the adopted Scott, John Hartson, just back from Welsh international duty. John is here. Stephen McGinn as well, who did so well, well, last season, helping to get Kilmarnock promoted. And he's now the captain of Falkirk scored two at the weekend and part of Skipper McGinn, as we called you. John was at one of the games as well, wasn't he? And some of the McGinn family are coming along here to the Radisson Red tonight with Steen. Yep, it's the Go Radio Football Show with Macklin Motors. Good crowd coming in now, some coffees and maybe the occasional drink being poured. What about it here, Stephen? You've, this is, what about it? it? Sounds a bit like, hello, Jerry. What about it? A bit Jim Whitish. Um, what about this gaff? Yeah, great setup. Uh, some of you obviously... Uh, want to go for a while but yep. with two young kids it's uh, <laughs> pretty hard but yeah we'll definitely be, be back so let's hear from Ange Postacoglu then what's the injury situation here's the update our Cameron yeah it wasn't 100% uh, so he's not with the team and uh, Lee Alabada didn't travel obviously car staff felt Aaron Moy had a bit of a niggle of training today so we left him behind so obviously we knew Cameron Carter Vickers, no. We're just hearing Aaron Moy, and he's not there, Aaron Moy. And of course, Leila Bada missing because of Yom Kippur for the religious reasons, and we respect that. Yeah. But they will ask John and Stephen in a moment or two. And John, would you get your lineup ready for us? Because we'll have it fairly soon, and Stephen as well. But first of all, Gary and the Gorbals. Gary, you've been on before. Great to hear you, and great to meet you here. Yeah, good to meet you guys. Hi, Gary. Well. You changed the hairstyle. It's a, it's a kind of Gaza blonde. I, I shouldn't say that. I'm trying I to know, think. Who. Wrong, it's Kyogo. Kyogo blonde. Yeah, yeah. Kyogo blonde. No, good at football. It's Kyogo. <laughs> who is? <laughs> Nine goals so far. Gary, what do you want to say to John and Stephen? Um, obviously, John. I met John before at the, the, the Crown Plaza before in his charity nights kind of thing. But um, obviously, like, you know, two, two great football players kind of thing. Just in terms of 
European nights, I suppose, you know, what what was it like in the dressing room before you went out for, for some of the big games that you played in? It, it was amazing, Gary. Uh, I think the atmosphere that the crowd creates, and I don't think it's a myth. I really don't, because some of the greatest players in the last 15, 20 years, the Del Pieros, the Messis, the Xavis, they always felt, even when they speak about the coming to Celtic Park, the crowd was just incredible. Um, they enjoyed coming there. They found it a very difficult place to come. Hence, we beat Barcelona twice during that period. Um, got a point away as well at the new Camp. Um, the crowd, just something happens, you know, in the East End of Glasgow on a, on a European night, you know, under the lights. Um, very, very special. Those are the nights that I can remember. You know, the, 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 the Derby games, of course. Um, the European games, the Champions League games, uh, and, and, and they're the nights the fans really, really put everything into it. You know, they sing from the word go. Yeah. And um, it, this, now that I'm retired, they, they are the games that I look back on. You know, I look back on and think they were very, very special. And I was very blessed and fortunate to, to have played in that era where we had a really good side under Martin on the Lang Gordon Strack. And so, the answer to your question is we were all, we couldn't wait to get out there. You know, uh, the nerves go slightly anxious before, a little bit of anxiety before you go. Well, that's a good thing. I think butterflies in your stomach is a good thing because it means you care. Um, but some of the nights, you know, when that anthem comes on, that Champions League anthem, you know you're ready to go. And we, we beat some of the giants of European football. We beat AC Milan. We beat, you know, we, we beat Barcelona. We, we beat Shakhtar Donetsk. We beat Porto. We beat Juventus. I could go on. We beat Manchester United. You know, so we took some unbelievable scaps as well during that time. Any big clubs? <laughs> One or two he's big he's going to get yeah. me. One or two, he's going to yeah. get me. What was your favourite John Hartson moment during his amazing career at Celtic? Do you know what? I, I think I've said this to you before as well, John. Um, probably my first um, Old Firm game when when John scored the winner. Um, I think Big Sutty might have gave you the assist. Not that he would have reminded you of it. But, yeah, um, yeah, he would have. No, but I, I can just remember you smashing the ball past the keeper and just like, mm. I ended up about three rows down. <laughs> think, John. John remembers that one. Right, Stephen, John, stay with us just now, Gary. Stephen, what's your team tonight, the Celtic lineup? I've gone with Hart and Goals, a back four of Juranovic, Welsh, Jens, and Taylor. And I've got a midfield three, McGregor, Tati, and O'Reilly, uh, with a front three of Jota off the right, Maida off the left, and Kyogo up front. Right, that's uh, still a strong lineup, and we know who they're missing. Looking good, and I think Welsh and Jens. People think it's going to be John. What I do think, you reckon? I think, I think Stephen nailed it. I, I yep. think I, w- I would have gone exactly the same. Stephen actually wrote it down quicker than I have. But I was, I was, <laughs> yep. I was talking to Gary, answering his question, and he but, loved it as well. And so did yeah, the crowd here. But you know yep. what? I, I think that's that's as strong as yep. we can go. You know, other obviously without the injuries, of course. I think Carter Vickers would definitely play. Probably. Uh, uh, Starfelt would probably play as well. Um, you could you could question whether the Bardo would sure. play instead yeah. of Maeda. That's you know either one. But um, w- with all the injuries that we've got, that that's as strong as we can possibly go, I believe tonight. Stephen, what do you feel about it? Yeah, uh, that the actual only other decision I thought he might would be Maeda Hagsanovic. Mm-hmm. Hagsanovic, um, you know, he went, he got the nod in Shakhtar, um, which surprised a lot of people. How did he do for you? Well, obviously, starts great. Um, yeah. Has a really strong uh, start to the game, but probably faded. Yeah, um, and that's understandable, isn't it? And I think I've just gone with my that because Ange Postecoglou knows him more, trusts him more, and, and I think he'll just get the nod. And of course, he does so much work, doesn't he? As well as going forward, he tracks back. He's non-stop. Yeah, he was part of the uh, Celtic. Obviously, that ropey spell to the, the end of the first half, and they went again second half. And I thought the introduction of my dad was a, played a big part in that. Callum McGregor is the only player in the team who played, what, four years ago under Brendan Rodgers uh, over there in Leipzig. And he's been speaking uh, about the game and how they're going to do it tonight. Like you Gaffer says, you know, we're coming here, really high-level opponent, and, and all we can do is, is prepare the game plan that we think can win the game and, and, and go and be aggressive in the game, try to implement our style, and we know it'll be a high-level match. So, you know, we've got to take our chances when we get them, and we've got to do a lot of things right defensively as well. So, you know, we're looking forward to the game. Gary, what can you say about Cal Mack? Were you happy enough that he took one for the team late on Yeah, Saturday? probably more, less uh, less unhappy with, with Rio Hattati's back pass. Yeah, um, sure. You know, you put it anywhere else in the park, yeah. um, the guys will tell you that kind of thing, but it's probably just rush of blood to the head, they yeah. kicked it anywhere. 
yeah, Callum had to take one for the team, and I think he was frustrated that he, he did have to do that kind of thing. Cause now he's missing a vital game up at Perth at the weekend. But for him tonight, your captain, oh, absolutely massive Callum McGregor fan. Mm. Absolutely love him, um, and I just think that he's he's going to lead lead the line again brilliantly. Do you know what I mean? And, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few surprises in that team. Maybe Haksabanovic may, may start. Um, but I think, I think it'll be a strong lineup that we'll go with, kind of thing. The Go Radio Football Show with MacklinMotors.com. Your local friendly experts for new and used cars. Let's go! go, 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 go. I think we may have lost the line there, but we're back. I have paid the bill, I promise you. This is Paul Cooney with John Hartson and Stephen McGinn with the Go Radio Football Show with Macklin Motors. And we're live at the Radisson Red in Glasgow for Euronights in association with Steen. Woo! Yep, Rangers, it was tough last night against Liverpool. They'll play them next Wednesday night and we'll be here again tonight. Celtic in Germany, RB Leipzig against Celtic. Stephen, you were telling us just before at the break there about your thoughts about Celtic away from home this season, even better than they are at home. Yeah, well, if you take out the fact of the St. Mon game, uh, which was, you're hoping it's a blip, um, they, they've scored more away from home, they've been more comfortable, um, where their teams need to come out a bit more than, than just parting the bus at Celtic Park. They do look a team that uh, need the grass in behind, and yeah. I think it does suit them more. John, that's been true, isn't it, early on? Look at Dundee United, look at Ross County and Kilmarnock. Away from home, uh, they were really on fire. Way they play exactly the same, the same system, they just do not change. Um, they're on the front foot, they attack, they got that high press, um, they get the full backs forward to create that overload in the middle of the park. They look for the spare man, there's always a spare man in the middle. Um, they get the ball wide, they're looking for Jota and Abada to get crosses in the box. Abada loves to get inside that back post when the crosses are coming in from the other side, so they don't change. And just really stubborn in the fact that he loves that 4-3-3 it's a system he's always used he feels he has the players to play that system so listen it's, it's, it's interesting to think that they probably scored more goals away from home than they have at home away from home tonight um, they were very wasteful Ange's words in Shakhtar and at home in the first game against Real Madrid um, but tonight for Celtic to progress you've got to take your chances at this level um, you know, they don't come around too often. And with the defence as well, you know, two of our main defenders missing, Starfield and and and, um, and uh, Carter Vickers, mm. you know, Leipzig might score tonight. So Celtic, if they get a chance, they, Celtic may need to score two or three goals to win the game this evening. But John, you've come, you're confident for tonight. You think I fancy Celtic to get yeah, a result. Good. I don't see much in Leipzig. Yeah. They've got one or two really good players, like the centre-forwards. Uh, Andre's a decent player. Yeah. They've got one or two others. Team of Erno's that time at Chelsea. Yeah. One or two others we'll go through when we get the we teams. Yeah. But they're 11th in the Bundesliga. Yeah. They've lost their first two yeah. games in the Champions League. So it's not as if we're taking on, you know, a Bayern Munich, a giant of the of Europe sure. tonight. So I, I think we could get something this evening. Gary, before you go, for the moment, you'll stay with us till later. Yeah. What's your scoreline? Um, so... I I mean, my heart's kind of saying score draw, mm -hmm. um, but when I think about it, it's not a popular opinion, but I do think Leipzig might sneak it tonight and win 2-1. I mm -hmm. think we'll score, but it's going to be the defence, the worry of the defence at the back without having Carter Vickers or Starfield. I think we we'll definitely concede at least one, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can get the score draw and keep the, keep the dream alive to get second spot. Thanks, Gary. Well, it's a huge night for Moritz Jens. Let's hear the manager speak about Jens and the responsibility on him tonight? Yeah, we thought he'd, he'd be a good fit for our club in terms of you know, the age profile, his character and sort of the, the style of footballer he is. And he's fit in well. He's, you know, he's adjusting to the way we play. It's a little bit different from you know, how he's played before. To be fair, he's probably played more than we thought he would play, but both our centre-backs uh, having some issues... Um, you know, I think he's, you know, the fact that we've thrown him in, he's, he's done really well and he's developing all the time, you know, alongside, you know, Stephen Walsh. They're both very young, you know, for, for defenders in particular. But, you know, I think the last uh, couple of games we've played together, they're, they're getting a better understanding and, uh, you know, we hope that keeps improving. Go Radio Football Show with Macklin Motors. It's uh, live from Radisson Red on the special Euro night and associating with Steen. Here's the Celtic team for tonight. Uh, this is how the numbers come out. Hart in goal, of course. Taylor, Jens, Kyogo they put here, and Jota. O'Reilly, Maeda, 
Hatati, McGregor, Welsh and Juranovic. And John Hartson and Stephen McGinn, I think that's the team that you both said, isn't it? There's no change. John? Stephen uh, nailed it. Yep. Yep. Stephen, you got it first. I'll put it to you first. What about that team then? That's the, that's the one that you reckoned Celtic would start with. Yeah, I think it's, it's the team, out the ones available that Ange can trust the most. Um, they know his way of playing. and um, Yeah, that, no, no risks with that team, I would think. On the bench, Bain and Segrist. Gikamakis back on the bench, back towards fitness. Haksabanovic, McCarthy, Bernabe, Abil Gard. Yacht Robertson, Forrest and Ralston. We'll give you the Leipzig team in a moment or two. John, your thoughts then? And You like it? That's the one you'd have gone with as well. I think it's the strongest team that we can physically play. You know, um, that for me, Moy is not a regular anyway. All right, he started at St Mirren. He's one, I think, that probably needs a few more games um, before we see the best of him. But we've seen him in the past. He, you know, he has been a good player. Hopefully, he can still bring you know some of what he knows to Celtic when he gets the chance. Um, but that that is as strong as we can go, uh, as I'm seeing on paper. Looking at looking at the squad, um, looking at the substitutions as well uh, for Celtic. Jack Amakis maybe uh, you know in for Kyogo. Uh, um, I think you see Jack Amakis come on at some at some stage tonight. James Forrest on the right for for uh, Maeda because obviously we have no um, we have no Abada so we haven't seen much again of, of young James E. Forrest this season um, Haksabanovic has been mentioned so as I said what we've got with all the injuries and, and the players who have not travelled I think Ange has gone with the strongest team he could have possibly picked Here's the Red Bull team Leipzig Galaxy in goals Simakin Orban Timo Werner whom you'd mentioned another one that you talked about John Zoboslai and Kunku, in fact, there's the three of them together, worth about 150 million. Mm. Andre Silva, Raum, Schlager, Vardiol, he's a top player as well, and Campbell. James Johnson from the city centre, in fact, the Cafe of the Year from Cafe Cala. James, great to see you here and hear you on the Go Radio Football Show. Thank you very much, Paul. Big Hi, football guys. fan. Hi, Good to see John and Stephen as well. What do you make of the Celtic lineup, given the injuries? Yeah, I think it's the best one that Ange could have picked. I agree with John. It, 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 the Celtic team pretty much picks itself these days, I think, mm. um, the first team. Um, and it's a case of who's then going to come on halfway through the game or whatever to, to solidify and just sort of shore it up. But yeah, I, I think that's the best team that we could hope for. You love your football. Some of the Rangers fans have been saying they just didn't. They didn't stick, they didn't go for it, they didn't know what they were doing. Celtic always go for it, no matter what happens. Do you think that they will tonight go? They want to get this win, they think they can get the win? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's the way Ange has instilled in them that, that, that the only way they can play now is, is to, to keep going. My only concern tonight is the fact that they have a new manager, Leipzig, um, and Marco Rose at the weekend sort of said, I'm going to fight fire with fire. So I think he's going to have... The, the team playing the exact same way as well. So tonight, I can I could honestly think it's going to be an absolutely fantastic game. I think it's going to be a right battle. Goals to come, Stephen. That's true. Looking at the Leipzig team, there they've got quite a few we could pick out. Uh, and Kunku, everyone's talking about. He's off to Chelsea, isn't he? Yes. And, and when you look at the squad and, and the team they've picked, obviously everyone knows about Timo Werner and Kunku. But Andre Silva was a prolific scorer for um, Porto and Frankfurt. Um, had a good spell at Sevilla in, in between the disappointing one at AC Milan so Danny Olmo Spain International Gradio I think Chelsea tried to sign him for a lot of money in the summer so this, this is a top team and just going back again to what, what John says I know it's uh, like every game your striker's your most important player but I think Kyogo needs to have that moment where, that takes him from a good Celtic player, player to a great Celtic player to take him to be a John Hartson or Chris Sutton one of these big games where he goes and takes these chances. You know, he could have had three or four at the weekend, but can you go and get that big European goal that, that everyone remembers for a long time, like John's down at Anfield? John? Well, I think it'll come. I, I think Yogo's only been at the club a, a year and a half now, I believe. So I think he did it in the Europa League. I think he's shown his quality. He's a top-class centre-forward. Um, some of his goals he scored. Um, but I'm sure from his own personal point of view, he, he wants to go and dispatch at, at the... You know, at, at the, the elite, which is the Champions League, no doubt in my mind he's got the talent, certainly got the ability. He's shown technically 
in front of goal. He can be calm. He's a wonderful finisher. For me, it's a matter of time. I wouldn't be surprised if he went and got himself a couple of goals tonight. That would be amazing, wouldn't it, James? Take him from being a really good Celtic player to one of the greats, Kyogo. Yeah. The Go Radio Football Show with MacklinMotors.com Your local friendly experts for new and used cars. Let's go! go, 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 go. Sorry if you lost us earlier on. We've had a few technical issues, but I think we've got them sorted. I'm not sure if it's the BBC or that other local station. Uh, no, I'm sure they wouldn't. The great professionals that they are. We're here, the Go Radio Football Show with Macklin Motors, Paul Cooney, John Hartson, Stephen McGinn, and quite a number of Celtic fans are here, live at the Radisson Red for Euronights in association with Steen. That was our... <laughs> well, we'll try that one again. <laughs> Steen, one of Scotland's top electrical companies. So we were just talking there before the break about Jota. Um, what do you feel, Stephen, about Jota? Well, it's, uh, my brother was right back at the weekend for Motherwell against Jota and... Um, there's a couple of times he's played against him directly now and what he said about him is he really disappoints he, he's one of the few players he, he said he's one of the best players he's ever played against but quite often sometimes you play against these Celtic Rangers wingers and they're at it they're really good etc he says Jota's non-stop he says and if I have that wee, wee moment we we let him get a half yard he doesn't disappoint he puts it in the box and he said off he can go both ways he, he, he can really speak any highly of him just what a tough opponent he is Paul must have been Really pleased with his performance then? Yeah, but... With, with his own performance? Yeah, it's, just, it's because of the way Celtic play. Um, he speaks about this current Celtic style oh. as the hardest Celtic team he's ever played against because they isolate you all the time. This is always me versus Jota. Um, and, and as he said, he, he doesn't really... He doesn't have a drop-off. Um, maybe not against him, maybe Paul brings it the best in him, but he, he says that he's always looking to get at him, and, and not all of them always are. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes they can swap about that other players aren't quite at it all the time. If you're just tuning in, here's the Celtic lineup. It's Joe Hart, of course, in goals, uh, Juranovic, Welsh, Jens, and Taylor. Then we've got, just looking for your paper there, but Hatati and McGregor, Jota on the right, you reckon, Maeda on the left, O'Reilly obviously there uh, holding, and Kyogo up front. It's going to be some game. James is with us from the city centre. John Hartson too. John, the special European Knights. I wonder if this could be one of the great ones. Look, Scottish football, we don't have a great record abroad. Celtic, it's been a long time since they've won in Germany. Why do you feel they can do it tonight? Because I don't think, um, I don't know an awful lot about Leipzig, but they're not setting the world alight right now as a team. Yes, they have a new manager. Sometimes you can get a bounce when a new manager comes in. Hence, they won 4-0 at the weekend. Or certainly, it might have been 3-0. Um, and their 11th, yes, yeah. they'll be desperate to get on the board in terms of getting some points tonight against Celtic. They'll fancy it. They're at home, in front of their home crowd. Like we always think, we are very strong with our home crowd. Um, so for that particular reason, um, you have to respect them. And I think yeah. Celtic will respect them. And has been on record and saying they're a very good side. They've got good players. But I just feel the way that Celtic have gone about these European nights, they were fantastic. They flew out of the traps against Real Madrid. Should have gone in front. Oh, should have, would have, couldn't mm -hmm. have happened. Doesn't matter. We lost the game 3-0. But we started the game really, really well. Shakhtar Donetsk. Shakhtar had a really good spell 20 minutes before half time in the first half. But Celtic dug in knew they had to go in um, at 1-1, not to concede any more, because they'd have had a mountain to climb yeah. if Shakhtar had gone ahead. They dug in, and I feel Celtic totally controlled the football match in the second half. They had three or four good opportunities. So in Europe, if we can reproduce that same type of form that we've done against Real Madrid and Shakhtar, I give us a chance tonight. The team won't change in terms of it, the way that it yeah. plays. We will go forward at every opportunity. We will give the ball to Jota. Callum McGregor hopefully can control that midfield with Hitati and, um, and uh, O'Reilly. Yep. Uh, and and I, I just, sometimes you just get a better feeling. And I, I think Salah can get something tonight. I really do. I, I'm, I'm coming and I'm really positive about it. I'm not always like this. Yeah. But I just feel, I have a sneaky feeling that Salah can get a result tonight. Let's hear from the manager talking about the preparation. Yeah, he thinks they've prepared to play well tonight. Our first two games have been 
yeah, have been have been pretty good from a performance perspective. Um, you know, we felt in the first game, you know, we, we did well for about an hour, but then, you know, we did fall away. And uh, second game, our performance was strong. Game we, we, we could have won, but as I said, it's not just about performance. It's about um, the opposition as well. So, you know, we'll just prepare ourselves to play well and uh, see what that brings us. He says the right thing, James, doesn't he? He is very good, the manager, with the players, with the fans, that relationship that he's got. Yeah, um, he just has this overarching way of being able to make everybody feel comfortable. Um, and like John earlier on saying he was so comfortable and so so happy to, to, to say it was going to be a win, I think the, that starts for the manager. The belief that they're going to win comes from him. I see he spoke well about Jock's team. Uh, obviously, Jock's team was before your time, but what do you hear growing up about that amazing manager, the first ever a British manager to win the European Cup, the, the trophy that Celtic are, are playing in tonight, the tournament? The, the simple fact that Alex Ferguson revered him um, and said that he was the only man that ever made him feel special. Mm. Um, for me, that, that's, that tells you everything you need to know coming from Alex Ferguson. I think that would do all of us, wouldn't it, as well? Fergie saying that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? See, he was at the game last night, um, along with James and other James. Uh, so, but James from Cafe Cala, what's your prediction then tonight? I think tonight it'll be two each. Right. Two each, I, yeah. I think, mm-hmm. it, I think there's going to be a good few goals. Um, but coming away with a draw, I think it, it's not the worst result. Mm-hmm. Um, if we could win, brilliant. But I think a, a two each a two each draw would do me quite well, happily. Will you stay with John? Yeah, would you, you, you'd go for that. I know we'll ask you years later, scoreline, but that would do. James, great to see Big John. Yes. In the yes, flesh. As. And Stephen as well. I mean, fit as a fiddle. You're, are you the oldest of the brothers as well? Yeah, yeah I'm the oldest. I, I'm yeah. calling you young Stephen. There's no question. No sure about yeah. fit as a fiddle. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Two goals at the weekend. Do you think the head's grown a wee bit, James? What do you think now that he's got the two goals? <laughs> yeah, well, it's it? a big smile. <laughs> big smile as well. He's just out here because of the babysitting, the baby Liam, two weeks old. So, Hannah, is Hannah a bit better with her now? Because she's, you know, the big sister now. Yeah, a bit better. It was my day off today, so we took her out and, and kept her busy. Feather with loads of sugar, so busy night ahead for my wife. <laughs> Keep her busy. Thanks, James. Speak to you later. Thank you, James. Yep, the Go Radio Football Show. Some great chat here with uh, dozens of Celtic fans who are arriving, and we're going to hopefully speak to each and every one. We were here last night with Rangers going in with great expectations, but people knew that was going to be tough. Rangers are in the group of death. They bring Liverpool here to Glasgow on Wednesday. <laughs> Celtic bring RB Leipzig to town on Tuesday. Daniel is with us now. Daniel, welcome to the show. Good to good to meet you. Good to meet you, yeah. Where do you live? Wishaw. Wishaw. So are you a regular attender at the games? Do you get to the matches very often? Sorry. Yeah, it's yep. okay? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Do you get yep. to the games? No. No. I see you work with Steen. Yep. Steen Electrical, so it's good. Thank you for supporting us. What do you want to say to John and to Stephen? It's a big game tonight, John, Stephen. Mm-hmm. Um Predictions, which was your predictions for tonight? Predictions, um, I think we'll get a result. I don't know whether it'll be 1 1, 2 2, we might even win. Um, listen, we could get beat 3 yeah. 0. Uh, I, I think we're brave enough to give positions, mm. predictions. But the one thing we try and do at Go Radio is answer questions and give predictions, mm. not sit on the fence. Yeah. Um, that's quite the easiest thing to do, it's probably the most sensible thing to do. We're not always as sensible as what we should be. <laughs> so tonight, uh, I think I think Sally could, could go and win. I fancy us to get a result. Um, so my prediction tonight, um, I will go for Celtic 2-1. I'm being very, very brave and bold. I know I am, but I just have a feeling tonight. I have a yeah, feeling. Yeah. yeah, about it. Yeah, strange feeling I've got. Daniel, you've cut to the chase. I was going to ask them in an hour, but you've done it. So you're asking Stephen again. What do you reckon? Scoreline? Yeah, well... Obviously, as I said earlier in the show, John's um, really talked me into a more positive look on it. I thought I watched the Rangers game in Leipzig last year, and Rangers really suffered on the night in Germany. And uh, what kept them in the tie was only losing one nil, uh, and, and staying in the tie and getting them back to Ibrox. I think this is a top um, team. I know they're not really showing it, but a squad full of full of talent. Celtic are going to suffer at times. I think Joe Hart's going to have need a big performance, especially with the two starting centre halves out. So. I thought Leipzig by a goal, but since I spoke to John, I think we might get out there. Well, thank you, Stephen. That's good. <laughs> Could it be such a big, a big night for Joe Hart? Did you see the Rangers game last night? I've seen Daniel, some of it, yeah. yeah. I mean, Alan McGregor was phenomenal. Yep, yep. Um, what do you feel about Joe Hart? What a signing he's been. 
Yep, he's been a really good signing. He's got the big performances. Obviously, with the wee mishap at the, the weekend there, but we can put that behind us. And uh, yep, I think he's been really good. I think that red card's a, a part of the risk and reward style for um, yeah. Ange. There's even if Joe Hart's just standing in his goal, like most other teams, Cal McGregor might not even get sent off. But yeah. I think his starting position, the way they play, the way they they play passes like that. I think for all the rewards you get, there is that element of risk and you obviously lose your captain for the game on Saturday. It drives the fans nuts at times, doesn't it? When he comes out so far. What do you feel about it as a footballer? Uh, well, that's the manager. Joe Hart will be getting told that's, that's where he's to yep. start. That's that's his job. Um, obviously, fans always want your goalie in the goals and if the ball comes through and to get it as well as being in the goals. But yeah, it's part of the style. It's, it's, it's part of why they love it. There is that heart racing moments at either end so uh, uh, that's his job and that's where he's meant to be Daniel what's your favourite Celtic memory over the years well it's it's obviously the Seville yep. Cup final yeah, obviously we never won that's one of the kind of memories that I always remember did you make it to Seville no no I made it to Seville just obviously I was a lot younger at the time oh, of course yeah so, <laughs> that's right uh, 19 years ago now yeah. and John of course you missed out because of injury yeah. the, it might have been different but it was a bit special, wasn't it? That oh, whole it run. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. A, it was a European final. Um, beat some great teams along the way. You know, Liverpool and Blackburn, and Stuttgart and Vigo, and um, some great performances. A wonderful team that was under Martin O'Neill. Um, we felt we could win every game. Yeah, That's, that was our approach, and. Uh, <laughs> It was great, you know, I think it was 100,000 people, whatever it was, 18,000, 90,000 people went to Seville, everybody go, and the, the, it was boiling hot, and unfortunately I played in thir- 12 or 13 games of that cup run. I played every game apart from the final, so mm-hmm. um, I would love to have played, but, you know, from a selfish point of view, but um, I thought the boys were great on the night, coming back from 2-0 down to 2-2, and then Porto then just, just pushed on, and the Jose Mourinho, all the players were... They were up to all sorts of things, you know, the, the Porto players going down, wasting time. Could you ever forgive Mourinho for the time wasting? I don't think Martin O'Neill ever has. Could you? No, I haven't either, no. to be honest, because he was, a, he, he was oh. obviously, it was a disgrace. It was that the, night, yeah. His acting yep. that night and telling his players to stay yeah. down and all his antics on, on the bench and everything else. And I think the gaffer, Martin, I was working with him last week in Aloha, and me, Alan Thompson, and he got asked about it. He, he, he's, he's struggling still? dealing yeah. with it still because it, it hit us so hard. Uh, yep. But there we are. It was a great occasion, but it would have been great to have brought the cup home, do you know? Stephen? I, I want to take this opportunity yeah. while John's brought this cup run up yep. and I'm sharing the couch. Do you think with the introduction of VAR, you're going Vigo? Would have count, counted? My oh. goal in Vigo. Well, Kenny Dalglish used to stick his big backside yeah. in now and again, didn't he? Uh, I'm not too sure about the equaliser at the new camp. I might have been slightly offside. But you know what? I was onside. I was onside in a couple of goals. So over the course of a career, it swings in roundabouts. You get some, you lose some, you know? John, who is this upstart young again? <laughs> oh, I just asked. Uh, a good question. I know oh, it's great. Yeah. I was a young, uh, no secret, I was a young Celtic fan. I remember the, the stadium going absolutely wild because mm. it's not, it wasn't really what happened in um, Spanish football. Yeah. They, they got a bit of a fright when that came in. John scored one recently for Scotland. And that was a, a well it go to VR, that was your initial thought. The yeah. 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 How is John? Well we'll find out shortly. Uh, Daniel, your score line then? What do you reckon? I was, I was just sitting there thinking about yeah. it before I came on there and yeah. it was basically the same as John's. Huh? I think it would be goals from both teams, but I just think we'll be able to get the, the second goal. And who do you think might get that? It doesn't really matter, does it? But whose name is coming to it's your mind tonight? Maeda. Maeda, <laughs> right, okay, look for his speed. Daniel, thanks very much for joining us here on the Go Radio Football Show. Yeah, we gave you the team just a wee while ago. Uh, No real surprises in it. And we'll give you Stephen McGinn, our co-commentator here, is going to give us the RB Leipzig team. Uh, Well, you know them so well. And we'll do that shortly. How are we doing? Next up, we're with Brendan. Brendan, good to see you. Pleased to meet you. You too. Um, how are you feeling about it? You look pretty excited, as we are. I'm excited. Yeah. I was actually saying to the boys over there, I was, I was worried about it. Some yeah. of the, we've been struggling without mm-hmm. Carter Vickers, but then, like yourself, listening to Big John, you're like, no, I think we'll win 4-0 now. Get him yeah. yeah. in the dressing room, eh? <laughs> uh, so you do feel your confidence? I'm glad yeah, my confidence sure. is up since I got here. Yeah, well, that's good. That's part of it here. You know, the Rangers yeah, I, th- I, I think, Paul, yeah. um, I think the first 20 minutes is going to be crucial. Right. Yeah. How we, how we go about it. Uh, we, we know that we get on the front foot and we'll attack. 
Um, but we have to also be wary of them. Um, we have to be ready for them. Might fly out of the, the, the you know, fly out of the traps, come at us, whatever tactics they've got. But I just think we need to stay in the game in the first 20 minutes. Um, and then obviously, as the game develops, try and get the lion's share of possession. We've got great midfield players who love keeping the ball. We've got good full-backs who are very good footballers. So can we frustrate? Can we frustrate them on their own patch the way that Celtic tend to keep the ball extremely well? Can we have long spells in possession and frustrate Leipzig tonight? And we have a threat going forward as well. Stephen? Yes, it's interesting because we say Celtic will come out that way. They'll come out the traps, and if you if you flip it, if if you if you put yourself in the Leipzig camp, this is a must-win game for Leipzig. They know what's going to happen. You don't have to have sent ten scouts to Scotland to know what's coming with Ange Postecoglou and Celtic. How do they approach it? As I said, it's this is their must-win game. How do they do they sit and hope it get through that 20 minutes of Celtic coming flying at them or do they try and fight fire with fire like uh, the previous guest said because Celtic are in third position they could well get second position do you think Celtic will come runners up Stephen uh, I think this this head to head is going to be a major, have a major say in it but with Leipzig already losing at home to, to Shakhtar after tonight mm-hmm. if they miss this opportunity against Celtic their next game is against the European champions so um, huge night for Leipzig as well as yeah, Celtic sure. Brendan how what did you feel about the Real Madrid game then brilliant they came to town the champions what I performance think, I think if we'd have took our chances I think we were well worth the result I think that we played really well I think like, so like when you look at this team the night as well like they've got a really strong central midfield but I think that we do as well and we're, our players are also comfortable at, at put, playing the ball about and keeping possession and not stressing out so I, I think we'll do well John is it possible to kind of relax the way that Celtic I mean the way Celtic play um, you know better than anyone is terrific to watch What's, how do you manage to stay calm in an atmosphere like the way it's going to be tonight for Celtic well that's why you play for Celtic yeah. that, that's why you know you're at a global club and that's why you're, you're, you're there because you're expected to perform and produce performances that go and win trophies and tonight, from a Celtic point of view, the players will be calm. They'll be used to these big atmospheres around Europe now. You know, they'll, they'll be able to take that on board. And I think you've got to try and just, just try and um, blossom in the atmosphere. You know, go out there and, and go and play your game. And they'll, they'll have great confidence from their manager. Their manager really believes in, like Martin O'Neill used to pick that 11. And he believed in us so much. Every time we went out, he always felt... We'd get goals, we'd defend well. And Ange is the same. Ange plays this system because he has the players to play the system. And it works, and they've had some really good performances already in the Champions League. Go and embrace it. This is, this is the moment, this is the time to, to really grow, you know, in a Celtic shirt tonight. Some of the players, the likes of Hatati, um, even Jota, hasn't had much experience at this highest level in the Champions League. What a platform it is for a fantastic talent, the young talent that he is, you know, our £8.6 million pound signing from, from Benfica to go and show that what a great, great talent he is. Um, so the players will have relaxed, there's no doubt about that, and they'll be looking forward to the game. They'll have a few nerves, naturally, but I think the boys will be looking forward to it. Brendan, what was your favourite moment as a Celtic supporter to date? What's the, what's the game you enjoyed most? Uh, well, obviously... They discuss Seville, but I think before that as well, just the the treble, the, the one as well, the six-two game, and oh, well, that's was amazing. I remember back then it was party time when you used to win the league. I was just a youngster though. Yeah. John, that was a special season, wasn't it, for you? Oh yeah, unbelievable. You know we, uh, but as I said, we had a good side, and and actually Rangers had a very good side yeah. as well, yeah. which was extra pleasing for Celtic. They had a good goalkeeper in class, Barry Ferguson, the Scotland captain. He was, he was sat here last night. Yeah, yeah and Barry, you know, yeah. and, and, and Barry's very good as well because I think he's balanced. I, th- yeah. I think he's balanced as a, as a pundit. Um, he will praise Celtic. I think you have to. Yeah. I think your credibility as a pundit goes out the window if you can't praise when you when the other opposite, the, you know, your team uh, should be praised. It doesn't matter who you support. Mm. I think that that separates the good pundits from the average ones. And Barry's very good at that. Um, 
you know, the likes of Ronald De Boer and these guys, Avalazzi, and I could go on and on and on about that. The, the Rangers team, Alec McLeish, D- D- I'm a McLeish Dick advocate. So Rangers were strong at that time as well. So for us to have had the edge over them so many times um, was extra pleasing for me. That was a great team. Let's hear from Ange Postacoglu speaking about tonight's opposition, RB Leipzig. You know, we know, that, like I said, the challenge is there tomorrow. They're a very good side. I think, you know, since Marcus Rose has, has gone in a few weeks ago, you can see they're, you know, they're hitting their straps in terms of the style of football. They're getting better understanding. You know, their, their result in the weekend was, was excellent. They've got some fantastic players and we're just concerned with our own performance and making sure we play our football, give them a good test. Brendan, we know they're a really tough team. What about your team then? Who are the key players for you tonight for Celtic? I think for me, Callum McGregor's yeah. always the main man. Pulling the strings and making everything work. I think he does a lot of things that you don't all, that doesn't always get noticed. And he's going to have a tough night tonight though, isn't he? Up against Zablosley. He is a terrific player. But if anyone can, it's Callum uh, McGregor. Definitely. I think Celtic have been lucky to keep him, haven't they? Because there was interest. They say Brendan Rodgers, what, three, four years ago at Leicester City. He probably could have gone south. But he stayed, and, and he loves this football club. Aye, I, 100%. I think that he's a player with the quality that he could he could play anywhere, I think. He's a great, great central midfielder. And I don't think he'll look out of place in against the, any of the midfielders for Leipzig. So you're sounding pretty confident. Steven's getting more confident. Just looking at him, I think he is. John's come in confident. What's your prediction? I think we could. I think we could take it two-one. I think we could win it two-one, which uh, is also what Daniel said earlier. John, just your face lighting up a wee bit. That would be that would be an amazing scoreline tonight, wouldn't it? Because they, they, you said it need to take the chances. Yeah, but we we are going really off the the the, the back of the performances that we've already had in the yeah. Champions League. Mm-hmm. We were terrific against Real Madrid. Okay, we got nothing from it. We were even better against Shakhtar Donetsk away from home should have won that game we got on the board okay it wasn't the worst result in the world but the way that we dominated the second half and missed so many chances you're almost disappointed going to uh, going to Warsaw and coming away with only a draw Mm. so that just goes to show already Ange is still building at this level he says himself that he wants to keep improving the team Uh, he wants to keep getting to the Champions League naturally go further each year the expectation at Celtic is always to go through, is always to qualify, it's always to get to the knockout stages. Them expectations will never change, but it's still very, very early in his reign. And, uh, you know, the opportunity is there to go and play in these big, massive games. And as I said, that's why I am, I am secretly confident tonight, because the two performances we've put in already have been outstanding at, at this level. Brendan, final word from you for the moment. What would you say about your manager, Ange Postacoglu? I, th- I think he's excellent. He's just got a great personality. I think the way he answers questions and the way he deals with the pressure of the job and everything, I just think he's the perfect man for the job. You're very trendy um, for those who are not watching uh, on YouTube. So what do you make of the Ange top? Do you like the black top? Aye, the jumper. <laughs> the jumper. Aye, class. It's maybe a wee bit older than what you'd be wearing. I'll make see if I can get myself one. <laughs> Listen, thanks for joining us. You'll yeah. stay with us. You'll be with us later tonight. So you reckon 2-1. Thank you, Brendan. Thanks to everyone we've spoken to so far and everyone who's on the socials as well. Brian is listening in in Donegal and he reckons 2-1. That seems to be a popular scoreline. Live here at the Radisson Red, Paul Cooney, John Hartson and Stephen McGinn. We're back after the news. The Go Radio Football Show with MacklinMotors.com Your local friendly experts for new and used cars. Let's go! There's a new name for Toyota in Lanarkshire. From one of the UK's biggest names in motor retail. Macklin Motors Toyota opens this October in Hamilton. We're bringing you everything Toyota backed by first class service. So come and view the stunning new Toyota range, all with up to 10 years warranty. Including the Igo Cross and the new Yaris Cross compact SUV. See our great choice of approved used Toyotas. Our formidable range of commercial vehicles, including the Hilux. Get expert servicing from our manufacturer trained technicians. And special Specialist advice from our Motability team. Macklin Motors Toyota opens Monday, October the 17th. At Whistlebury Road, Hamilton. Hour two, this is Paul Cooney with John Hartson, Stephen McGinn. 
with the Go Radio Football Show with Macklin Motors live at the Radisson Red in Glasgow for the Euronites in association with Steen. Yay! Well, you can tell it's getting, uh, what's I think 35,000 will be in the stadium tonight. RB Leipzig and there'll be 60,000 at Celtic Park next Wednesday. And many of our friends here for the game tonight, they're going to watch it and then we'll do the podcast later. So we gave you the team news, Celtic Heart and Goals, the back four of Juranovic, Welsh and Jens and Taylor, Hatati and McGregor, O'Reilly, Jota and Maeda White and Kyogo Furuhashi through the middle. We'll give you the full RB Leipzig team in a moment or two. Stephen knows it backwards. Uh, Stephen McGinn, a great student of the game. You just you absolutely love your football as well as playing it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah, to the detriment of my relationship. But yeah, I love <laughs> it. Watch as much as I can. John, I said last week, is he a typical footballer? Sky Sports on all day. That and Go Radio, of course, as well in the background. He said, no, not at all. His wife was on immediately. Saying, well, Come on. he's only got two yeah. kids. He's, got three, he's three behind me still, so you've got five to catch up. So when you got, you can't watch Sky Sports that often when it's yeah. five running around the house, Stephen. John Hartson is in the house. And can I tell you, it's a big day for John because, is it 11 years? Today. Today, Paul, yeah. since you last placed a bet and it became a problem for you the gambling yeah, yeah. and you gave it up John 11 years ago yeah it's my uh, it's, it's my 11 year pin if you like I've got loads of people to thank there are too too many people that have helped me along the way and of course I've had to help myself um, during that time but no it's um, it, it's a great feeling obviously my life has turned around completely in terms of my focus and uh, from I, I'm, I'm a recovering gambling addict. Yeah. I will always be in recovery. It's about staying abstinence of, ga- of gambling. And uh, no, I'm in a much better place for it. I, I know gambling is a serious problem, problem out there, not just for in sport, mm. but in society. And uh, mm. I do my best now. I'm very passionate about helping people with the John Hartson recovery workshop events that I'm, that I'm doing currently. And uh, I, I want people not to go through what I went through. Do you know, it's an addiction. It's very, very difficult. But there is a way out. And, and obviously, I've, I, I've showed myself that if I can do it, anybody can do it. John, you've had the highest highs in football. You've had a career that most people could only dream of. Uh, but with the illness, with cancer, that you fought so heroically and successfully, lots of people fight it heroically and can't win it. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're in awe of what you've done and with the gambling addiction because you can lose it all in a day and it's mm. tough for people but that's maybe for another podcast that we would talk about but John congratulations isn't it great news Stephen 11 years yeah amazing yeah. Uh, you took the words out of my mouth and yes. all of them yeah, brilliant achievement thank you guys and Appreciate Alan I think wants to say hi as well Alan thanks for joining us here yeah good Alan is with us here Chris we're just going to hear from Alan you're next to John Hartson I am indeed yeah, oh, yeah. You know. what, what a night yeah yeah, congratulations, John, no, and your you, Alvin, your pin. That's fantastic. Appreciated. Nice words, thank you. So, Alan, what are you thinking for tonight? I think, like every other Celtic fan, we're a bit worried about tonight. Uh, missing Carter Vickers is probably a big, a big thing for us all. Um, you can only be hopeful. We've been playing fantastic football under uh, under Ange. We've done well uh, in Europe, minus a few results, but. I think we've been playing fantastic and we can only be hopeful for, for what's to come tonight. Celtic have moved up such a, not just a level into the Champions League this year, but the difference of Celtic compared to last year in Europe, do you think that came too early probably? The guy was just in the door, the manager, and he was getting it sorted out to regain the title uh, and Europe probably wasn't his priority. Would that be fair? I think so. I mean, last year, in the early days even at the start of the season in terms of league results was poor and I think everyone you have to just write it off it's a new manager a new team embedding his his new style of football into the players but we all know what happened come the end of the season everyone bought into what he was trying to do it was a fantastic result at the end of the year the football that's been played is fantastic and we can only hope for more of this season as well. And how are you enjoying life back in the champagne in the <laughs> Champions League? <laughs> yeah. yeah well <laughs> Every fan wants to be there. Celtic obviously has a, a long history of uh, great results in Europe and it's fantastic to be back in the Champions League. So what are you thinking? What do you want to say to John and to Stephen and to the audience? Uh, hopefully John, Stephen and the audience can be a, a, a lucky omen for yeah. tonight. Um, ultimately, I think everyone, if we can get a draw, I think everyone would be happy with that. We'd take it back to Parkhead. We've got 
um, Shakhtar back at, at Parkhead as well. Leipzig, and if we can get the job done uh, at Parkhead, that would see us through, hopefully, to the next round. What have you made of Matt O'Reilly? 1.8 million. What a player he is, isn't he? He's, he's caviar in the middle of the park. He's, yeah, he, he's the type of player that you, if you're taking a punt on someone, it's worked out fantastically for Celtic. He's, yeah, he's a bit of class in the middle, and what more can you say? He's, he, yeah, he's he'd be a great signing, Stephen. We like that one, caviar in the middle. Yeah. Never had it, of course. Yeah, but yeah. That's yeah. a way to describe it. Yeah, I indeed. Think. Yeah, yeah. Well done. yeah and, but I think it's previously been spoken about the, the English markets is uh, out of Celtic Rangers League in terms of getting players in, but I think Matt O'Reilly and Joe Aribo at, at Rangers have showed that you can pick up those those diamonds, and I think. Um, the way he's been playing uh, this season, I think the biggest compliment you could give him that nobody speaks about uh, Tom Rogic leaving. I think that's the biggest compliment you, anyone could ever say about Matt O'Reilly. Who found him? Do you know, Stephen? No, you, I'd love, I'd love you're to know. He, 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 he went to yeah. Swansea. Swansea were really, really keen on signing him and uh, that deal never materialised because I think it was um, the Swansea City bar, uh, manager, now Russell Martin, he came to Swansea from um, MK Dons, and I think he knew him there. And then, and then obviously now he's at Swansea, but he, that, that deal never materialised, and we managed to get him. Um, you know, and, and I totally agree. He, he's such a good football player. He, he's, he's a left footer, and I just, I don't know what it is, but left footers just feel, they, they just look as if, you know, that, that left foot, it just looks so much more stylish, you know, remember? A bit like John Collins used to be, that's another great player for Celtic. His way to pass is is terrific. Um, he's always available. He's always on the, the, you know, he's always on the side, and he sees pictures, and he's just a wonderful player to watch. I, I admire the way he just goes about it and keeps the ball. Um, and he's one of them. He he's, he can thread the ball through an eye of a needle. Stephen, you know, that, that way to pass as well, yeah. Stephen, is so so un, unappreciated yeah. in football. Stephen, share with us, what was it like coming up against Celtic um, in recent years? You've played against some of the players in show tonight? Yeah, well, obviously, um, a lot, long running battle away. Not personally, I'm sure yeah. he's not that bothered with me yeah. with Cal McGregor over the years. Um, top player. Yeah, um, yeah I, I didn't have, I've not had the... I don't know, a privilege because yeah, I was yeah. a commandant last year and then I watched commandant v Celtic uh, earlier in the season and yeah. I thought, I don't really fancy being out there. Really? Actually, as I'm asking that question, I'm realising Killy were still in the championship last season. So that was another uh, mispass yeah, by me. You're right, because you think a commandant would be in the Premier League, but you got them back up there. Callum McGregor, right, what was he like to play against? Give us that insight. It was, I played against Callum McGregor when he was um, in Knox County in Lone. That was my first kind of experience of him. Uh, he was a bit of a tricky winger, but uh, I think... The biggest compliment with Callum McGregor's, I would always give him that it's maybe not even um, his biggest strength, but how robust he is. Mm -hmm. He just goes and does 60, 70 games a season like it's like it's normal. You know, once I get over 40, I'm thinking, and he did summer here. He yeah. he he knocks out for 65, 70 every season like it's like it's so normal. So, um, and he goes in, goes and just plays three games away for South, uh, Scotland, mm -hmm. and such a key part of a successful Scotland team at the minute. Just looking at the bench, Bain and Segrist, the keepers, G. Kamakis, Haksabanovic, both of them, of course, featuring quite a lot this season, uh, McCarthy, Bernabe. I mean, he was signed for, was it four million as well? Mm -hmm. He's hardly been mentioned, of course, because the Celtic uh, defenders playing so well. Robertson, Forrest and Ralston. Uh, that's the Celtic bench for tonight. Leipzig will we tell you how they are lining up. Kulaksi in goals, as we know, Simakin, Orban. Timo Werner, the ex-Chelsea. What did he score? Ten goals in the year and a half, two years that he was there. He was in Kunku, we mentioned. How much is he going for? Is it 50-odd million, the pre-contract with Chelsea? Yeah, I think it said about 56 million. It's phenomenal, John, in isn't Kunku. it? Yeah. yeah, former PSG. and His numbers weren't that great as PSG, but obviously if you look at the, the talent that was there, you know, the Neymar and the Mbappe and, of course, Messi. So, mm. But even being at PSG and being around them players... and. His record here now at RB Leipzig mm -hmm. um, is very good, very impressive. Plays off the front uh, of Andre Silva, who's a Portuguese international. Mm -hmm. 19 goals for Portugal in 45 yeah. caps. I think he's got Timo Werner, obviously went to Chelsea for, mm -hmm. I don't know, was it 30, 40 million or something like yeah. that? So obviously yeah. he's got talent, he's got something about him. Um, so they, they, they look a really decent side on paper. They've got some big names, you know, big game players. 
but so have we. You know, so have we. I think you can respect them, but when you're directly up against the opposition, you've got to try and get the better of your direct mm. opponent. And if Saturday can do that, if we have more players that do that than them this evening, you know, we've got a great chance. You mentioned the Hungarian terrific player, Sabos Lai. He's there. Andrea Silva. You mentioned Raum Schlager. Vardiol is a terrific player. I mean, he was wanted to just uh, during the summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it was Chelsea, Chelsea. tried, tried yeah. really hard to get it and Leipzig were desperate to keep hold of him uh, not back big money for him so I think that shows how important a player he is to them Breaking news, the pizza's arriving here in the Radisson Red <laughs> so that's, uh, Alan looks as though he's you look absolutely fit as a fiddle so I've got no comment to make there and he's fairly tall and Campbell as well What are you thinking Alan tonight? What do you reckon? Yeah, I think it's going to be a tough one as John said if we win our individual battles, we'll be in with a chance. But in terms of the way that Angie's team has always set up and has always played, we play as a unit. Uh, they, they, they defend in packs and, and they move forward as a team. Um, so I think if we can play the way that we've played throughout the season and bring it into European football, we, we should be all right. I'm hoping, hoping for a win, obviously, but I would I'd be happy with a draw. Happy with a draw. Quick break. We're only half an hour away from kickoff. RB Leipzig against Celtic. <laughs> the Go Radio Football Show with MacklinMotors.com, representing some of the biggest motoring manufacturers across Scotland. Let's go! go, 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 go. This is the Go Radio Football Show with Macklin Motors, live at the Radisson Red in Glasgow for Euronights in association with Steen. Woo! Yep. <laughs> We need to record that and keep playing it. 35,000 people in the city centre of Glasgow at the moment, but we've got a couple of hundred arriving here uh, because it's such an early start. It's only just after uh, t- coming up to 20 past five. We'll be back at five tomorrow night. And thank you, everyone. So many people, thousands of people making the switch to the Go Radio Football Show every night. Let's get some more, uh, to meet some more people. John, yes, it's great. Get a few pictures great. Yeah, later. The yeah, brilliant. It's fantastic. Stephen as well. How's training going? Who have you got this weekend? Yeah, Peter Hedaway. Oh, of course, up there to the blue tune. You'll be uh, all right there, of course. Jim no, McAnally's well, still in charge. Exactly. Of the, yeah, Jim McAinally, he's been there yeah. a while now, Jim, yeah. wasn't he? He's the longest serving manager, isn't he? he must Jim, be. Jim was with the academy yeah. when I was at Celtic. Was he? Yeah, yeah and Jim's a great guy. Yeah, he's a really is. good coach yeah. as well. And he took the job, obviously. And he's also a taxi driver up in Peterhead, I Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, he's got a taxi. Do like you a wee deal his... when you're up there? We can get... Uh, yeah. no, Jim was far too tight to do that. <laughs> 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 of course, Cy was his assistant for such a long time, but then he moved on. Right, who are we going to meet next? We're going to meet Christine, yeah, who yes. is with us. And then in a few moments, Daniel as well. Christine, you're not a massive football fan, but you just wanted to be here tonight. No, I wanted to yep, be here tonight. Definitely. I'm with Monica Johnson. Uh, she, Hi, Monica. Uh, she's huge on Celtic. Right. Hartson is one of the players that we oh. knew, well, I know. I don't know much about Celtic, yeah. but I knew of him. Um, so, you know, I was quite happy to come um, and meet him. met him at the bar earlier. He was such a gentleman. Oh, he is, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, such yeah. a gentleman. I know. Not yeah. many of us and, left. Uh, Mon- Monica has family, like uh, Lee Johnson, Matt Johnson, just a wee shout out to them. Right. They absolutely love him. Oh. Um, so I just thought I'd give a shout out. Great. That <laughs> accent, is that... Uh, That's Fife. Fife, or a Fife, Fife, Fife accent. <laughs> great. Welcome to the great city of Glasgow, the number Thank one you. city in Thank the world, you. we yes. think as well. Yes, definitely. And Fife, of course... Uh, one of the all-time great Celtic goalkeepers, John Thompson, who yes. was tragically killed in a game. Uh, he was from Fife, and people go oh, every he? year on his anniversary uh, to lay flowers right. at his grave, right. even though I didn't that know was that. such a long time yeah. ago. That's the thing about football. We had some great Rangers fans in last night as well. The banter as well. The Celtic fans tonight. Yeah. That's the thing about football. It's the, the currency of yes. Scotland, isn't it? You need to well, know I had never been to a game, right? and I, got, yeah. I went to a Celtic game twice this year. Absolutely loved it. Did you bring them luck? What do you think? Um, Did they win? To be honest, I sort of <laughs> zoomed out halfway through, so I'm not sure. <laughs> you come along for that. <laughs> Daniel, how are you doing? Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Bishop Briggs. Bishop Briggs in the north, Glasgow, of course. Just I. So, what are you thinking? What are you thinking with John here and, and um, Stephen? To be honest, I'm probably praying for a one each draw. Uh-huh. I'm, a bit, I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit concerned how um, Jens and right. is going to handle. Is it in Cuckoo? Mm-hmm. So, I'm quite yep. kind of nervous with that. And obviously, a big CCV is a, big, yeah. is a massive miss. He's quietly grown in everyone to become one of the top three players at your club. Top two, I would probably say. Top two, him and, yeah. Well, I don't know about him, Yota and Kyogo, but I just love how the... That's three. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been difficult. I know, I know. But I, just, I love how the, the players call him the fridge. I think that's just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the, the nickname. So, yeah, 
you're a wee bit nervous at the beginning. Stephen was as well. Look, it, it's a Champions League game. It is going to be really tough. We heard from the manager earlier on. Um, of the three, who's your outstanding player? You're worried. Uh, Moritz Jens, though, um, we spoke with Peter Grant, who had him down south in the early days. Was that Fulham? He was there, and he said he's a terrific talent. Needs to mature a bit, but this could be the night that he could do really well. Hopefully, but yeah. I was I was impressed with him early doors. Mm-hmm. But the last two the last two performances with Welsh, I just don't think it's really clicking with the two of them. So I think they need to kind of up their game to cope tonight. John, how tough is that to establish a, pa- uh, a partnership with Stephen Welsh, who played a fair bit last season, not so much this season, but he's been back in recently. Is that one of the hardest combinations to get right? It is. Um, it takes a bit of time, you know, to work on that at, on the training ground. You know, that little bit of an understanding, you know, being in sync together. Um, but Stephen Welsh, he's played he's played a lot of games now for Celtic as centre back and. He's got to back himself, you know. He can't listen to all the noise about, you know, people saying, well, yeah, I understand, you know, Cameron Carter Vickers has been a great signing for us. His partnership started off a bit, a little bit shaky with, with uh, Starfelt. It improved. It got much better. And I'm just gone with Starfelt and, uh, and Carter Vickers this season. And, and, uh, and Jens has featured several times. But Stephen Welch, he's got to come in. He's got to rise to the occasion. Um, and it's an opportunity for him to prove people wrong, just to show people that he can go in alongside Jens and he can defend properly and he can make right decisions and he can come out with the ball. And I actually quite think he's all right with the ball at his feet. It's just one or two decision making. Does he go and head it? Does he let it bounce? These type of things, which as a centre half are really, really crucial. Um, but I like him. I like Stephen Welsh. He's not at the level at this moment in time of a Carter Vickers. Um, but he gets another opportunity tonight and, you know, he's got to show people and back himself and be confident that he can step in, you know, when one of the major players has said that I've set out and, you know, uh, Stephen alongside us is a defender. So he, he's just as qualified as I am to talk about Welsh. Now, uh, Stephen Welsh started the season. He actually scored Celtic's first goal that season. Um, so where, where I feel sorry for them both is obviously Welsh fourth choice centre half Jens has come into Celtic still trying to find his feet it's really unfortunate to lose you're both starting centre halves and they're both trying to kind of find their way into the team and they're both not comfortable if you stick any of them next to Carter Vickers you probably see an improved performance but where everyone's kind of worried is as a partnership none of them are really established Celtic players yet which in games like this can be a problem that's a good step. Was that the Aberdeen game, or am I havering? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's first. the first goal of the season for yeah. Celtic. I'd forgotten about that, John. That's yeah, Stephen did. Welsh. He and did. confidence must be such a big thing for a defender. Must be. Gikamakis is on the bench, Daniel, so good news that he's back in the squad. Yep, yeah, hopefully, usually Kyogo, he does usually last kind of 60, 70 minutes, so usually Ange likes to change it, so. Yeah. Good to, be good to bring him on the last 20 minutes. I think that, that, that that's almost a guarantee. Tonight in the 65th, 70th, 70th minute, Ange will put three or four substitutes. He likes doing that because he knows the system that Ange wants to play, the, the, type of, the type of energy that you have to put into that with that high press and you get back and you defend and you go forward. A lot of the legs, a lot of the guys need to come off because that, that energy levels and the amount of work you put into that, it needs a bit of freshness normally after about an hour, 65 minutes, yeah. and then you want the, the substitutes who come on, the Haksabanovichs and the, you know, and the, the Jakamakis, these type of players, you want them then to go and make an impact in that last 20 minutes of the game. But there's no doubt he will make several changes. You know that. Be, he does it most games, doesn't he? I, I hope it's 65th, 70th minute when he comes off, he, he storms down the t- tunnel and a half like you back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> on two goals. St. Ange, why did you take me off? Oh, I was a bit I coming off, man. <laughs> And did you think last night with you know Rangers playing in Liverpool? Because I remember you know covering that game uh, 19 years ago, and all the media there. I was in the media section. They were all saying, "Yeah, who, who are Liverpool going to meet next?" They just assumed that the Scottish team would be easily beaten um, by Liverpool. Uh, it's tough, but John gave you a great moment that night. Him and Alan Thompson and, and the whole team. It was probably one of my favourite memories of going to the pub as a young Celtic fan. <laughs> I remember John Hartson scored. The table was full of pints. Yeah. The whole table went up in the air as soon as, soon as you scored. That was amazing. But can I give a big yeah. shout out to my, my daughter Lila? Of course. Home. 
Hi, Lila. Hi, Lila. Hi, yep. Lila. Another, how old is she? Nine. Nine, right, okay, more and more listeners are tuning in to Go Radio. That's what I'm telling everyone anyway. Um, uh, and no, it's terrific, we're getting can more Can I give a people. shout out to my nephew, I, Harris? I don't think I can stop you. He's a, yeah. huge, he's a huge fan. <laughs> yeah, good. Football. Where is oh, he listening? Harris. Yeah. Kirkcaldy. And Kirkcaldy in yes, Fife yes. as well. <laughs> uh, it's brilliant. I was through in St Andrews the other week. Oh, there. I've, got, I've got a property there. Oh, yeah. have you? I, a caravan up in Kinkelbury. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't actually. The family do though as well. Yeah. It's fantastic. And of course the Dunhill was there yes. last week. Yep. Isn't Scotland brilliant? Just it's look lovely. out the window as it gets dark and wet. <laughs> but look, you wouldn't have it any other way. Yep. Janice, should I ask you a prediction then? You're going to be the good luck charm for Celtic um, tonight? Well, I was told that if I put a bet on earlier on today, it was 10 to 1. So if I put 50 on, I would, would have won 500. So I would have said Celtic because we put a bet on, so I'm hoping. OK. I'm hoping. I'm just thinking there, and I'm only teasing. <laughs> it's 11 years to the day since John Hartson had a bet. <laughs> Thank you, Christine, for that one. That's a By classic. Way, they're good I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know much about it, but yeah. I bet you're not going to have a... <laughs> A flutter in that one, Stephen. Oh, don't worry, don't you, worry. You, Stephen McGinn now, 33, just a lot. Look, how young does he look from the McGinn family? Um, we've been so proud of John, aren't we, in what Scotland did last week uh, and the week before. So, um, and of course, Aston Villa. And he was at the game. I saw a picture of him. He was up here for the game with Real Madrid. Yeah, first time he's uh, saw Celtic in a long time live and uh, really impressed with the way Celtic went about it. And uh, the style of football we play under Ange obviously keeps a keen eye on it. And... Yeah, big game for them, Monday, Monday night football at Nottingham Forest. Still can't believe we didn't get him. Cannot yep. believe we never got John McGinn over the line. So I'm led to believe Celtic wouldn't cough up the extra whatever it was. Um, and you just look at him now, what's John McGinn worth now? 50 million? One well, of the best midfielders in the Premier League. You, you couldn't really put a price on it now. Um, Unbelievable. That, that was a big error from Celtic. I'm, I'm not criticising whoever was in charge of the recruitment at the time. John McGinn, big Celtic fan as well. Uh, how on earth we never got him to Celtic, I'll, I'll just never know. And of course his grandfather, uh, Jack, was the chairman of the club. He's the man that started the Celtic view. So, Stephen, are you exclusively going to tell us what happened? You are here in Go Radio. <laughs> During the break, we'll be back in two minutes live. 15 minutes from kickoff. The Go Radio Football Show with MacklinMotors.com Representing some of the biggest motoring manufacturers across Scotland Let's go. Go, 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 go. Thanks to everyone for tuning in Paul Cooney here with Stephen McGinn and John Hartson The Go Radio Football Show with Macklin Motors We're live at the Radisson Red for the Euro Nights in association with Steen And we're in the last section because we are only about 12 or 13 minutes away from kickoff. We're only about 10 minutes away from that Champions League music. Zadok the Priest will be bellowing out shortly. If you're just tuning in, here's the Celtic lineup. Uh, and Stephen McGinn, you've got it. It's Joe Hart and goals, a back four of Juranovic, Welsh, Jens, and Taylor, a midfield three of Hatate, McGregor, O'Reilly, and three up front of Jota, Kyogo, and Maida. John, we know RB Leipzig was spoken about their players. I mean, that, the value of that team must be. I don't know, 300 million or whatever. But Celtic go with some confidence tonight. Uh, they know it's going to be tough, but this is doable. What do you think? What does the manager say at this point? What was Martin O'Neill like before the big European games? Well, leave it all on the pitch. Don't leave it in the dressing room. You know, go out there, go, go and showcase your talent. Um, yeah, you can admire these players. You, whatever whatever how, how much worth the Leipzig team is tonight, I would say the Real Madrid team was worth probably 10 times more. So look at the way we played against Real Madrid in, in the first game. Um, we overpowered them in the first 45 minutes. We were the better side against the Champions League holders, by the way. Um, we need something similar tonight. We're away from home. Um, but Martin O'Leary used to say, just, just go and embrace it. And enjoy the occasion. Don't let it pass you by. Yeah. Um, these things can pass you by if you allow them to make an impact, go and showcase the reason why you're in the Champions League, the reason why you're at Celtic is because you're a, you're a very, very good player. You know, go and show people that you can play at this level. And, uh, you know, and Angel be saying the same. Angel have great belief in his, in his system, in his style, in the players that fit his system. And um, you can't win nothing if, you, if you're too anxious and you're nervous and you're in awe of the opposition. You know, you've got to believe that, that, that you can beat these type of teams. Stephen, that's a great point. The, the way that Celtic played against Real Madrid must give them so much going into this game tonight. 
Yeah, and I think they'll have a belief in uh, they'll have a belief in the manager and the way they play. You know, um, everyone knows how Celtic approach that. They all know their roles uh, in his system, um, the structure they've got. So I think that might bring a calmness to it. Um, they aren't going out to try and be um, get the ball and dri dribble past everyone. They've all got their unique roles in, within the team, and um, I think Angie's gone on record to say he doesn't he doesn't say a lot to them before he goes out. I, I've watched him at games; he's quite quiet at the side of the park. That, he, he trusts them to do their, their roles in the team and, and bring their best. Let's hear, for the last time before the game, let's hear Ange speaking about the game tonight against Leipzig. Yeah, I guess so, but I mean, every game's a challenge. You know, that's the nature of the competition. Uh, every team you play is uh, a top-quality side, so you know that uh, irrespective of what's uh, happened before or what games you've got ahead, uh, you know, the, the next task is to, to take on the challenge that's before you and... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, you know, Leipzig are a you know, top quality team uh, here at home. It's going to be a fantastic challenge for us as a football club. And, uh, you know, uh, we just need to keep performing at the levels we know we can. The talking is just about done. John, who do you fancy for the Champions League this year? So it's Real Madrid. They beat Liverpool last year. Um, I'm thinking Man City, can they finally do it? I think Man City, <laughs> talking about gambling... <laughs> I think yeah. Man City are favourites. Um, yeah. I think they're hot favourites. But again, you know, don't don't write off Chelsea. You know, don't write off uh, Real Madrid. Bayern Munich are always there, thereabouts. Um, Napoli? Napoli have had a great start. They've won their first three. Um, you know, beating Liverpool 4-1 as well, going to Ibrox and winning. And then thumping Ajax last night 6-1. In Amsterdam, so they they've started off really impressive. Not quite sure if they've got enough to go and win it. Um, so I think it, it'll probably come between one of the global clubs, if you like, the Cities or the Chelsea. Don't write off Liverpool either, by the way, because you know at this moment in time they're having a difficult time. But uh, you know they have got the capabilities to turn it around. They've got an 85 million pound striker in in Nunes. They signed from from uh, from Benfica. Um, they've got good players, so don't write Liverpool off. Stephen, yeah, well, it's got to, it's hard to look by Man City, especially if that uh, big striker they've got. Yeah, uh, always, pretty impressive, well, isn't he? So and only fifty million. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying only, but no, but yeah. in, in the current market, it seems too good to be true, to be honest. But um, it's funny, John mentioned Liverpool there. Yep. It's, I think the City boys will still be so programmed to that rivalry that that's the result they're still looking for, mm -hmm. even though they're maybe twelve points in front of them. I think they'll still be concerned about Liverpool. Yeah. Stephen, for you, pre-match, what do you in the big, big games? Do you get nervous, or how do you how how do you calm your nerves? I, d I don't tend to get nervous. I mean, didn't play in the games, size of games that, um, that John played in. But last year, but we were playing our broth um, in that second last game of the season mm -hmm. at Rugby Park, and remember it. I remember th I woke up that morning and and I really felt nervous, and I didn't know would come over. I went out a walk for about an hour, mm -hmm. and. Um, and I remember just thinking, sitting there with 1-0 down at half-time, and what's happened to you? Like, what? Just go out and, and play your game, and thankfully it went our way. But it's the risk and reward, you know how good the end of it can be and how bad it is. So sure. you're just constantly thinking about that. That plus bringing on Chris Burke made a difference, didn't it? Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's what, what a quality that yeah. guy brought on. Um, yeah, where is he, James? We've not seen him for ages or heard him here on the show. He's, uh, it's tough when you get into management, isn't it? Because you're coaching, I know he's coaching at, at Kilmarnock now, and it's different. Final scoreline from you then, Stephen. I know you've, you've been changing your mind a bit. Well, I drove John. in and I thought, yeah. I've been thinking all day, Leipzig might edge it 2-1, but uh, Big John's talked me into a 2-2. 2-2. Two -two. Two -two. Uh, let's get a show of hands before we go to John. So who think that Celtic are going to win tonight? Yeah, just okay. A draw? Yep, fair number. It's actually 50-50. Celtic to lose. Oh, <laughs> Gary from the Gorbals will give you his name and full name and address shortly. <laughs> Is that Barry Ferguson in the corner there from last night? <laughs> Barry, uh, who's always really fair. John, the talking's just about over. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just yeah. about to say that, Paul. All the work is done. Yeah. All the work is done. All the set pieces are sorted out. Um, Celtic players are so accustomed to this system, 4-3-3. We know what to expect from Celtic. Celtic play well, and their top players perform. You know, Kyogo can you know can he yeah. get himself a, another huge goal tonight? Um, it's like the boxers, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, you know they 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 train like like nothing on earth, 
and then two days before the flight, fight, they do nothing. You know, they just get ready mentally. They have the way in. They do very, very little work. It's like it's like the teams of football. All your work is done. And on a Friday, you go through set pieces. You have a light session, and then you re- you preserve everything for that 90 minutes. And that's what Celtic have done. So, you know, believe me, Celtic will be ready because Angel makes sure of that. Don't mention the boxing just before you know the drug test. The Conor Ben versus uh, Chris Eubank Jr. It looks as though that's off at the moment. I'm just looking there at the pictures. It's minutes away from kickoff, and there's a big number of Celtic fans there, as they always are. Home or away, John. A yeah. fair number, thousands of them Brilliant. there. Yeah. Uh, trips to Germany. Um, some of you will have been on some of these trips. Celtic have come close at times. Yep, uh, James, I think you were in Stuttgart. Celtic went, scored a couple of times there. I think the job was done. That was in the 2003 campaign, as I recall. And Stephen, there's the team's in the tunnel and Celtic wearing the away strip which apparently has been one of the biggest ever selling strips looks a bit like the Inter Milan except it's green black and white John here we go we're going to hear the Champions League moment music in a moment or two and looking at these players who you're thinking about for tonight Kyogo Callum McGregor yes as a group they need to perform defensively it's um, you know it's uh, Jens and and Welsh Um, Juranovic will, will push forward so will Taylor and uh, can somebody put Kyogo through early on? You know, Kyogo makes great runs. He darts in behind. So Celtic need another huge performance, another huge night. But I believe they're ready and I think they're capable. John, thanks so much. You'll be with us for yeah, the Can't wait. podcast later, which we'll do here from Radisson Red with Steen. Stephen, three games in a week with us, plus uh, two goals at the weekend. It's been good so far. And as we get ready for that, I see the manager there, the two managers uh, embracing uh, he's had a kick, hasn't he? The new one. He's had that bounce there, Rose at uh, RB Leipzig. But for Celtic, as we look down and hear the music, there is Juranovic, Maeda, Kyogo, Jota, O'Reilly, Stephen Welsh, Moritz Jens, Hatati, who scored that brilliant goal of the weekend, Greg Taylor, Big Joe Hart, and the captain, Callum McGregor. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. You'll stay with us for later. Enjoy the game. We're back here on the Go Radio Football Show with Michael Motors at five tomorrow night. We'll be running the rollover tonight uh, and last night, and we'll be back with the podcast. Thanks, everyone. Good luck to Celtic. The Go Radio Football Show with MacklinMotors.com, representing some of the biggest motoring manufacturers across Scotland. Let's go. There's a new name for Toyota in Lanarkshire. From one of the UK's biggest names in motor retail. Macklin Motors Toyota opens this October in Hamilton. We're bringing you everything Toyota backed by first class service. So come and view the stunning new Toyota range, all with up to 10 years warranty. Including the Igo Cross and the new Yaris Cross compact SUV. See our great choice of approved used Toyotas. Our formidable range of commercial vehicles, including the Hilux. Get expert servicing from our manufacturer trained technicians. And special Specialist advice from our Motability team. Macklin Motors Toyota opens Monday, October the 17th at Whistlebury Road, Hamilton. As one of Scotland's leading mechanical and electrical contractors, Steam delivers a wide range of mechanical, electrical, plumbing, heating and renewable solutions for your home or business. Our specialist team provides our clients with the highest quality service and installations, giving them peace of mind and confidence to return in the future. So, for all your mechanical and electrical projects, regardless of size or complexity, make Steen your partner of choice. For more information, visit steenelectricalsolutions.co.uk. Euro Nights from the Go Radio Football Show with Steen, one of Scotland's leading mechanical and electrical contractors. And the full time whistle has just gone. RB Leipzig beating Celtic by three goals to one. We're here on the podcast. We're live at the Radisson Red with many friends who've come in, Celtic supporters who are here, Stephen McGinn still with us and John Hartson, John 3-1 at the end how would you summarise it? Uh, I, I thought we did ever so well to get back into the game with Jota's goal and then ultimately I think Leipzig just came on strong um, I can't argue with the result I thought Leipzig were the better team I thought they deserved to win disappointing conceding immediately after going 1-1 you have to stay in the game for at least 10-15 minutes once you get the equaliser we had a bit of optimism then I think us myself and the supporters here tonight thinking 1-1 
you know, let's get back in. We got back in it for the for that period. And then it's criminal just to concede and be so sloppy. Um, and then the third goal absolutely kills the game. Um, but we had opportunities again in the first half to score, but again against a really strong Leipzig team with some real top players. So I'm not arguing with the fact that Celtic lost on another night. Um, they could have maybe got something. But as I said, I, I think Leipzig, I can't deny the fact that I thought they were the better team and probably deserved to win. We'll ask John shortly, is it over for Celtic? Are they now? Well, they are bottom of the group. Steve McGinn, what do you think about Celtic tonight? Yeah, it's disappointing, obviously. Um, the quality of Leipzig. You know, some real standout performance. See McCann at right back. Uh, see Buzlai, who scored the... Uh, a great goal the, or the VAR goal and then yeah. Nkunku obviously showed why he's one of the most wanted talents around Europe but I think the, the second goal is a real sobering moment uh, when you're watching it to, to get the let off with the goal and then within a minute your goalkeeper's passed it straight to their team a team of so much quality that can break you down anyway to just give them that opportunity and Celtic didn't recover for it uh, from it was like a punch to the gut and, and they just couldn't get go- going again the record books will show that Nkunku opened the scoring in 27 minutes Jota his first Champions League goal in 47 minutes so a great start to the second half but the double from Andre Silva 64 minutes and 77 minutes but there were two moments when it went to VAR and it went in Celtic's favour and James who was with us earlier on James that was the thing how did you feel as a Celtic supporter when VAR went with you twice um, when that happens you, you're thinking great we're, we're riding more luck here um, and for once it's went our way um, but yeah it's just deeply disappointing I mean they showed how good a team they can be tonight um, certain parts we couldn't live with them other parts we competed really well against them we were all talking earlier on McGregor going off was a huge blow um, we seem to sort of lose it a bit in the midfield after that confidence did seem to fade for a while John what did you feel about I mean the loss of Callum McGregor given that you didn't have Carmen Carter Vickers was a big factor yeah it was um, it, it was a factor obviously when you lose your captain uh, you know and, and obviously such an influential player it's always going to be a loss uh, you know it, it. I think we looked a little bit disjointed then at times um Kyogo was, was, was isolated a lot up, up top on his own. We couldn't quite get the ball to go and support Kyogo. Yes, he had, he had a decent chance where he spun, but I thought that the guy got a block in the defender from Leipzig, threw his body in the way um, to block that shot. But, you know, we, we can talk about it all day. Um, they have got a player in Kunku. He's got a £90 million release clause. That's a £70 million centre forward they have. It's 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 we're up against some somebody a team that have got you know real real good quality. Not to say that we haven't, but that's what we're up against. We almost punch above our weight, um, and that's the level that we're at. And we've got to try and strive and get better at this level. But again, it's no shame uh, tonight. I thought the performance was okay. It wasn't great. We showed good character to get back in it, but then. I thought Leipzig were just too strong, um, too tactical aware. I thought they, they, they had the lion's share of the ball. They controlled mid, the middle of the park. And they scored good goals. They got good players. They broke on us for the third goal. It's a brilliant counter-attack. Uh, but again, you know, Leipzig come to Celtic Park next week. We're still very much in the competition. It's in our hands. We beat Leipzig. And then, of course, we beat Shakhtar. We've got two home games to come. You know how strong Celtic are at Celtic Park. We go and win the next two. And I think that takes us through seven points. So there's still that positivity. There's still that, there's still that opportunity for us to go through you know, in, in second place. All right, so John Harson here on our podcast, live at the Radisson Red with Steen. You do think Celtic are going to take six points in the next two I, games I don't at home. think, Paul. I think there's a possibility with Celtic's home form. But yeah. again, Celtic will have to play very, very well to beat the team tonight that have outplayed sure. Celtic for long periods. But I think the, 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 the positive to come out of it is is that we have to beat Leipzig next week and then beat Shakhtar and we will finish second, I think, behind Real Madrid. I think that's how... That's I'm, I'm holding on to that fact that we still in, we're not dead and buried. We're not out of this. And of course, if we finish third, we stay in Europe, might have a playoff game to go through to the Europa League. So are we starting to think now? Can we finish third now? 
Stephen, what do you feel? Yeah, well, there's no doubt with a, a pack Celtic Park that Leipzig are going to face a, a, a different version of Celtic. But what I would think is um, the counter attack. Um, Leipzig are going to counter how fast they were, how, how dangerous. Celtic are going to have to be really wary of that, like they'll speak about. But at the same time, Celtic created a lot of opportunities tonight without really getting going. Missing a lot of key players still created a lot of big opportunities. 69 seconds in, I mean, you hadn't even started your pizza. When they came close, you could see it right away, and Kunku came close how many times? Yeah, and, then, and after, I think I turned to it after nine minutes, and I said, there's been five shots here. And then... Um, it was, it was the first half was a wee bit disrupted with injury. At one point, you think there could be about 10 goals here. It could have been. Stephen McGinn, John Hartson, Paul Cooney here on the podcast. James, you heard what John said and what Stephen's saying. What do you feel about the next couple of games? Can they come third? Yes. Yes. Any doubts I had, John's dispelled yeah. them. <laughs> He's brilliant. He's inspirational. I try, I try and yeah, stay positive sure. because yeah. I realise the level that Celtic are playing at now. And I know the Celtic fans, we have great respect, we have great belief yep. in this particular team under Ange, but we haven't been in the Champions League for a while. I think we have to keep building and building and then hopefully, you know, uh, listen, I still think we've got hope in, in this particular group, but I do try and take the positives out, out of even even defeats like tonight. James, thank you. You'll be up early tomorrow. Kathy Keller, some, yeah. get the porridge <laughs> on. Thanks very much for joining us here at the Radisson Red. We're with Steen and some of our friends are here from Steen. Um, yeah, what about the Joe Hart moment? We have to mention it. What did you think, Stephen, that uh, the, the careless pass, which was a killer one, but it provided the, the opportunity for Silva? Yeah, well, you're almost thinking, you're starting to get that feeling it might be Celtic's night. Um, with the second one going in your favour and yeah. I think if, if he didn't have so much experience he would actually probably put it down to a wee bit of naivety mm-hmm. he'd be hoping he's an experienced goalkeeper might just say do you know what lads can't, let's calm down let's uh, play our way back into this game so for one of your most experienced players to make a mistake like that is, it's a massive blow and uh, as I said I didn't think the team recovered from it it was kind of self-inflicted he's done so much good so much, so much right for Celtic what about Joe Hart at that moment well, the manager wants Joe Hart to play out from the back. Yeah. That's what he wants. Um, but I just think sometimes there's nothing wrong with putting your foot through the ball. Um, you know, if, if there's not a real pass on, like a simple pass, like one of your centre-backs comes and shows an angle and he's got plenty of time to turn on the ball. But if, you, if you're trying to play passes... Uh, and, and they get intercepted then obviously Joe Hart will take a bit of flack for that tonight but I suppose Ange will come out I would imagine and say look I ask my goalkeeper I ask my defenders to come out and play out from the back that's the way I want the boys to play so Joe's been magnificent ok he made another mistake at the weekend but um, listen he's a top class goalkeeper he's made a mistake tonight and it's cost Celtic on another occasion he might have made a mistake and it hasn't but at this level, you're up against top-class opposition and they'll hurt you. Mm. Pep said his distribution wasn't good enough. Um, he's been playing so well for Celtic. Daniel, what do you feel about that moment with Joe Hart? It was a big moment in the game. Like you had, to, you had to keep it at least the same score for at least five, ten minutes. And to give that away straight away is just criminal, to be honest. And Obviously, Ange's asking him to play that way, but he's got to be able to do it. And last season, he did. There was very little mistakes last season, but the last two games, there's been two errors, so ah, he has to improve. And yet he had some good saves, so he's a great shot stopper, isn't he? He does so well. He's a brilliant calming influence. He's like the vice captain of the team, but that's what happens when you're a keeper. What do you feel about it overall? Daniel, what's your thoughts? What's your memories of this game now? Because it's in the um, history books. I'm gutted for the, yep. gutted for the result. I, I predicted one each and it was, we were yep. on top for some of it, but we just gave two easy goals away and you can't, you can't give goals away in that, at that level. So, But I'm hopeful we can win next week. And what about the goal? It was a bit special, wasn't it? Not Celtic's one. goal. <laughs> Celtic's. Uh, I know, Kyogo, it was a great goal. Jota. Yep. It was so quick. Like It was just qu- quick passing. One, two, and then it was in. It was it was an actual great goal, but it's disappointing not taking a follow on for that, to be honest. And, and Stephen, a Kyogo header came close early on. He put the keeper under pressure. Yeah, he, he looked live. He looked desperate for that goal, yeah. Yeah, that first Champions League goal. And the goal, there's actually one in the first half where Hatati plays a brilliant ball through the lines to, to Kyogo, and he just gets a shot blocked. So he plays another brilliant one in the second half. And the way Celtic play, that, that kind of man over is always on, and, and Jota's there to, to finish it off. 
So Rangers lost 2-0 last night at Anfield. They bring Liverpool here next Wednesday. Celtic losing 3-1 tonight in Leipzig. So it's next week, it's Tuesday at Celtic Park. You'll be at the game. Uh, Callum McGregor, there's a worry about him. What did you think, Daniel? That was also a big moment to lose your captain. He's the one player we don't want to lose, mm. to be honest. And Abelgaard, he seemed he played reasonably well when he came back on, but hopefully in the next game or two he'll improve and be better. Do you need somebody, John, at the back who does the ugly side of the game? I can have Neil Lennon. Someone was saying that to me earlier on. Callum McGregor is really good going forward. He's great defensively as well. But do they need another player alongside? Was it maybe Aaron Moy? I know he's not fit. Listen, I think I just think sometimes you, you, you've got to, you know, be realistic about things and have a look who we're up against. Um, but I also think as well, this time next week, there'll be a full house at Celtic Park knowing that a win yep. takes you above Leipzig takes you above Leipzig with the same games played um, that's the way to look at it now you can pick out all the all, pick the bones out of this performance the Joe Hart mistake one or two missed opportunities in the first half bad defending uh, at times um, you know and, and I just think that you know, I don't want to be too critical of this team because they've done exceptionally well to be where they are. I don't want to be too critical of Ange because he's been outstanding. I think the team will get a bit of criticism on the back of... And I said before the game, this team will concede goals. That's the way Celtic play. Um, but we'll also score a lot. And when we're when we missing chances and not taking the opportunities... You know that that's when you suffer because um, you can't go away from home and concede three goals, expecting to score four. You know, but I do think this team will concede goals, and that's the way Ange sets his team up. Final thought from you, Daniel. Then you've heard so much, you've said something as well. Do you think Celtic can come third? Yeah, definitely. Next next two games are really really vital. So if you get three points in these next two games, then you never know. Have you enjoyed it here? Yeah, Rats and red with yep. steam. Brilliant experience meeting my hero, big boy, big he, bad John. He's some man, isn't Boys he? are devastated. Hey. Boys, keep the faith. We go again next week. And he buys a drink. What's not to love about big bad John Harson? <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, it's the podcast here from the Radisson Red. And we're going to be on every single Champions League game. Now, are they going to go further? Because we came into it tonight thinking Celtic would. Rangers, we've always known it was going to be really, really difficult for them. Stephen, as you look at it, we're just waiting. We've got a reporter, Gillian, over there is going to listen if Ange Postacoglu is interviewed on BT Sport. She'll keep us up to date. Keep the missus busy. Um, <laughs> Stephen, what are you... You know, listening to everything... You, but I was alongside you um, when some people were saying Celtic could do with somebody else at the back alongside or playing beside Callum McGregor because he is so... He's got so much in, in the toolbox, but somebody who would just go in and do the uglier side of the game. Yeah, and I think uh, Abogard's appearance tonight, I think you can take the positives from that. I thought he um, very physical, intercepted things, read things well. Um, to replace Callum McGregor like for like, you're going to have to spend a lot of money. But maybe at times in, in these away games against these teams of this quality, could you have someone in, in beside them to help? Like they're only kind of plays at Scotland that frees them up a bit more. Did you want Callum McGregor to bring the player down earlier on, remember? And then, did you get a flashback to Saturday? Yeah, when it's so fresh in your mind and he, he's praised from Saturday. At the time, you're just thinking, screaming um, for him to bring him down. Um, but these boys are so quick. I mean, he's got a split second to, to decide. And the minute he decides not, the, the boy's away and, and still got the quality to play a through ball under pressure. And that, that's the quality you're up against at this level. Did Shakhtar really beat them? 4 1 mm. earlier on. It's unbelievable in football, isn't it? You just don't know. Celtic should have beat them. Alan, you were with us earlier on. How are you yep. feeling after that 95 minutes? Oh, obviously, down in the dumps. I mean, I, on the point you made there about Shakhtar, I think it was a different Leipzig team, really, that played them. They were obviously not one to put words in anyone's mouth, but they were perhaps playing to get the manager sacked at that point. The, the manager kind of. Seen his time and the, the, team, the, gone really, the, 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 the team yeah. weren't playing the way yeah. the, certainly the way they're playing now. The, the the new manager seems to have got a bounce out of them. They're playing a lot better than than they were, and unfortunately for Celtic, they came up against a real top class side tonight. John, did you see that as well? The difference in the team under Marco Rose. Um, yes, yes, and no. Um, I think I think Leipzig went into the game tonight 
knowing that they hadn't won in the first two games and knowing that they had to win to get back in, in the group. Um, I, I think as well, with the home game coming now, um, I, I think it gives Celtic an opportunity to to still be in Europe beyond Christmas. Um, and we're not dead and buried yet. It'll be a different atmosphere next week, hopefully. Um, but we, we said how good, we said how good Hitati is, how good O'Reilly is. But tonight, you know, they've been played, they've been, you know, they've, they've been taken apart. I'm watching the, I'm watching the chances from Leicester. So there's, there's three or four opportunities they've hit the post. Um, they played one twos on the edge of the box. Defensively tonight, you've got a central pair and who've hardly played together two or three times in their lives. You know, our central pair would be Carter Vickers and all right, you, you can't dwell on the no. injuries and who's not there because ultimately you've got to go with what you've got. The, tonight was the best two that that Ange could have picked. But my my point is um, is that at this level we are still wanting. We are still wanting when we go away from home. We're missing opportunities. You've got to got to take your opportunities. It's it's a. I think everyone because of the success of Ange Postecoglou and what he's what he's brought to Celtic, the optimism. I think sometimes you forget it's still a pot four team. And finishing third as a pot four team, still uh, fresh off the Scotland yeah. thoughts, I think. Yeah, sure. Finishing third still a big success, you know. He, mm-hmm. Leipzig, a top team. Um, if, if that was maybe, I don't know, an Inter Milan that's maybe committed a pot two or something, yeah. you're thinking, yeah, sure. it's really difficult to take anything. So you've got to respect the quality of the teams, and, mm-hmm. and still they're still building. Getting to third, getting Europe after Christmas is a, is a huge success still. Alan, what else are you thinking with John Harson, Steve McGinn? I think what John said, we're not dead and buried yet. We yeah. we've still got the the two games uh, against Leipzig, um, and uh, uh, Shakhtar, Shakhtar, yeah, at home. Uh, back yeah. at home, and it's in our hands. If yeah. we can win those games, we're, we're still in a shout. Well, there's a few spots and maybe's there, weren't there? And of some course. of the players didn't tonight. As a, you know, O'Reilly, everyone's raved about him. Um, Hatati, uh, but it's a level. It's, it's a couple of levels up, isn't it? And you look look at Nkunku how good was he for anyone who didn't see it when you say that I mean the, the individual talent that they had tonight yeah. you've got Nkunku and you've got a few other players that are clearly elite players mm. with, within European football we're not quite at that level uh, our strength is playing as a team as I said before we hunt in packs we, we attack mm. uh, as a unit and we defend as a unit and at times that didn't quite work for us tonight uh, and the, the quality of the individuals um, at Leipzig kind of shone through, unfortunately. And St. Johnson at the weekend in the all-important Premiership, two points ahead of Rangers. They've got the game at home to St. Mirren, but there's so many injuries. I mean, that has been a feature of the last couple of weeks and yet for a while Celtic were almost injury, not injury-free, but not many problems, but they're beginning to pile up. And I think domestically... We can get away with that. Okay. Uh, I think we've yep. got the quality, the strength and depth within our squad that we can deal with, hopefully, obviously the weekend aside, the kind of domestic situations uh, and get through the injury situations that we have. In Europe, though, it's a different matter. When you lose Cal McGregor, and when you've not got sure. Cameron mm-hmm. Carter-Vickers in your squad, you're, you're going to feel it when you're playing against top-quality sides like tonight. And well, that's why you've got a big squad, because now on Saturday you might have a few niggles, you might have a few injuries coming out from this yeah. night tonight, 90 minutes of hard work chasing mm-hmm. the ball. And at the weekend, then you're looking for your Haksabanovichs, you're looking for mm-hmm. your Ralstons, mm-hmm. you're looking for these guys who are frustrated because they're not playing. Mm-hmm. Well, go and show the manager then on Saturday why you're at Celtic, why you want to compete with your direct uh, teammate in yeah. your position, they get the opportunity. They, they did. They, Ange made six changes at St Mirren. They were off yeah. it. They yeah. never showed. They never stepped up. They might get another opportunity against St Johnson on Saturday if another couple of players, you know, Jack and yeah. Marcus has to come in and show Ange, I'm ready to start games. He's not started many games this season. He's gone with Kyogo the whole while. Um, this is why you have a big squad. You have a team that, that wants to compete against each other. You know, and and that and that's why. And now at the weekend, some of those fringe players may get another chance. And now they've got to step up against St. Johnson. Alan, thanks for your contributions. We've Thank enjoyed them much. from you, from James, Jamie, James, <laughs> James. I know, uh, and also from Daniel earlier.
Right, it's the Go Radio Football Show. Uh, we'll be back on at five tomorrow. We continue just now on our Euro nights here at the Radisson Red and still some of the Celtic fans are with us. It's actually only five past eight. Uh, you forget, don't you? Because we started at four o'clock. I was going to say it's five past ten, but it was the early kickoff. Um, Gary from the Gorbals. Well, Gary, big night in town here, the afternoon in town. But it didn't happen for Celtic. What's your your, your thoughts on tonight? Three one. Yeah, as you say, Paul. Um, you know, it's it's a couple of levels up. Not just you know when you think of last year, we were playing a team with a hyphen in their name in the Conference League, and now we're playing in the Champions League against the big boys. So, yeah, the chances were there. Um, we've missed again, like the game against Shakhtar, um, like Real Madrid. But you know, you need to take your chances, and you can't complain if you don't take your chances. Joe Hart, who has been one of Celtic's best signings at a million pounds, an absolute bargain. Yeah, I, I obviously watching the replay again, thinking, what is he thinking? But as as John says, as the guy said, um, you know that's the way he's been taught to play under Ange, and you know it's it's, it's cost us tonight. You do start to think, so what's Sigrus? Uh possession like and his distribution because it must be tough for the managers Stephen I saw you smile there is that because he said the team of the hyphen because can I tell you the hero of so many people here tonight he was ready to go for me a few weeks ago because remember before the Real Madrid because I did mention Bodo Glimp a couple of times he was like Paul we've heard enough of them is that what you were thinking there? I was just laughing at the hyphen <laughs> at the hyphen I think that's the way Rangers fans described them oh, in, is that in right? jest at, uh, oh, I see. Yeah. but they beat Roma 6-1 last year yeah. I don't think they were well, exactly. yeah, yeah I mean yeah. Uh, whether that, that was a fluke or not I don't know but you know you know. Sure. at the same time it's as a yeah. step up in the Champions League that is a question I mean you don't want to have a goal at anybody nobody does but Joe Hart I mean will Benjamin Segrist be saying hey give me a chance Stephen yeah, everyone, everyone's looking to play, but I think Joe, Joe Hart's got enough money in the bank. He's, he's been an excellent sign, a real problem position uh, before he came in. He's been, yeah. for a million pounds, I think it was, he's yeah. been an unbelievable signing for Celtic. Not only that, I've seen him come out, he fronted up. He was the one they probably asked to come out, and, and I'm sure he's uh, owned up to him because he's that type of personality and uh, huge and on and off the pitch at Celtic. So, yeah, I think he's got enough money in the bank to, to keep the jersey. I'm just looking at the notes from earlier. You were surprised I still take notes because I know you and James and Chris and the younger uh, crowds, it's all on your uh, iPads and phones and things. Just there was from 90, 69 seconds, they were on the attack in Kunku. And then again, a minute and 58 seconds. Then their keeper was injured and went off, but uh, Galaxy, Blaswich, didn't make any difference, did it? And Kunku... What a lob over Hart, and it was 1-0, Absolutely. except went to VAR, and then it, it wasn't. Just shows you, yeah. it, you know, here in Scotland, you'd have thought that's a goal. Yeah. But when you see VAR, we need to get VAR soon. I know it's coming, what, December? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, we're hearing it's December. I know there was reports yesterday floating about that yeah, it's, it's very, very much sooner. Maybe this yeah. month is as soon as that kind of thing. I think it needs to be brought in sooner because the decisions you're seeing all over Scottish football mm. it's it's whether or not you know there's certain decisions it's, that it's going to get used for yep. and certain decisions sure. it's not John that was a special lob though wasn't it by Nkunku when he just lobbed it over Hart what about VAR it was there tonight and it called it right yeah it did call it right and Celtic had I, I wouldn't even say reprieves because the correct calls were were actually um, came in and actually made tonight by the VAR team um, but I go back to the equaliser. We're all out of our seats here. It's a brilliant break from Celtic. We know Celtic can do that. We know they can break and they've got quality and they can score. Wonderfully weighted ball from Kyogo. Brilliant finish from Jota. And then that's when a team is at its most vulnerable when you score. Because you've got to get back in. You're all overjoyed. You're all excited because you've scored a goal then the concentration levels have to switch on straight away right we're back on it we're back in the game it's 1-1 and then within one minute we're 2-1 down we're all deflated again you know it, you you look at it and it's just it's just not good enough you know so they have to defend better than that Brendan is with us joined us earlier on Brendan you're obviously clearly disappointed and yet there were moments and as John said if they had how surprised were you they switched off Look, 100% uh, felt as if we had our chances in the game. I think there was a lot of kind of slack defending. Uh, 
we get beat with big balls over the top a good few times I think that over seasons gone by as well it's been a weakness that we've had for a couple of years the ball over the top seems to catch it's us interesting out. you say that because they scored a goal tonight their third goal was almost a, a cardboard cutout same of the goal that Real Madrid scored against us mm-hmm. that long diagonal yep. John you said that a, a right player, away a player yep. pulls on, on, on the, uh, the shoulder and then he lobs it in back and then they have the oncoming runner it was almost like watching the Real Madrid goal their third goal tonight yep. so we're susceptible still to the long diagonal ball when we're defending the one that you talked we have, about to, we have to try and off. fix these things the one you talked about as well that got cut off as well that was a ball over the top it was and yeah and that was cut off as well So, Stephen you spotted that as a defender yeah, it's what they're looking for. Um, they, these te- these teams as well, they, they play it so fast sometimes. Like any, I think Stephen Welsh is slightly deeper, and th- th- they just punish you for it. Any any kind of slack moments. I'm just trying to find out what Jota said. I think he said, "I enjoyed my celebrations. I'm making this bit up. Um, I'm just checking my Portuguese." Obrigado. No, he's just been interviewed there in BT Sport. I'm not sure if Angel be out soon. You could. How gutted was he though when they went? Was it two-one up or three-one? And he couldn't believe the players had switched off. I know. Uh, it's one of them. As I said, I think that we had spells in the game where we played well. When we lost the second goal, it was it was a. Disappointing, very disappointing. Reasons to be cheerful are what? So, Kyogo at times. I mean, he got in some good positions. At times, the goal was good that we got for there. I think just at times the amount of chances, like the stats, yep. were pretty even throughout a lot of the game. Like we, I think the first half we had more shots, more shots in target. I think like we hold our own for spells, mm. and then as we lapses in concentration, that we tend to get punished for. Mm. James is listening there for and who's just coming on uh, at the moment. So we'll, we'll hear what the manager is saying. We'll relay that to you in a few moments. Uh, how are you feeling about uh, Saturday and St. Johnson? Uh, I think I think we'll have enough to get through the St. Johnson game anyway. Um, the other European games are just hoping that we get Carter Vickers back sooner mm-hmm. rather than later. I think we need that that in the defence yep. Stephen listening to the manager beforehand it sounded as though he could be fit for uh, Saturday for St Johnson Carter because there's no point in bringing him if he requires a wee bit more treatment no and he's vital for this team you can't afford to, to risk him and, and lose him for longer um, as I said it's, when you've got that championship winning defence and, and you come into the third Champions League game and both your main centre halves are out it's, it's a blow to any team around Europe doesn't matter how big a score it is yep Brendan, John was saying earlier on, look, don't forget, next game, Leipzig, next week, how do you think Celtic will do? I think it's when you've got the fans behind you, if you can play the way we played in the first half and then came out and got the equaliser early in the second half, I think it gives you optimism for what you can do with your own fans behind you. Yeah, we've showed at times this season um, how good we can be when we get on the front foot and then we go and score a goal get two goals you know get two get two goals up with the chances you create you take your opportunities and then you make things easier for yourself we had we had opportunities Celtic tonight to score a couple of goals with a couple of half chances but if they go in um, you need that little bit of luck as well you, if they go in all of a sudden the, game's be, the game becomes easier you don't want to be chasing you know uh, going to go down all the time and having to get back in the game so tonight um, is a really the way I see it it's a, it's a really really disappointing result I thought Celtic huffed and puffed conceded some bad goals could have been more um, but Celtic are still very much in it I think the place will be rocking at Celtic Park next week Leipzig are beatable Celtic will have to improve on tonight's performance and then we already know that Shakhtar are beatable because we should have beat them you know out in Warsaw uh, the the previous game so Celtic are very much still in it but obviously over the next couple of days everybody will be um, you know going through all tactically where we went wrong defensively you know, we're struggling. We're struggling with some big players uh, that are missing, in particular our two main central defenders. So there's got to be a perspective around it as well. Yeah. The level that Celtic are now at, this is the Champions League. You know, it's the highest level. Um, so, as I said, I think the positives to come out of it, we are, we are not dead and buried. 
Brendan, some great chat from John, isn't it? Uh, Good to be here this afternoon, this evening. Yeah, it's been been great uh, listening to you, John, and no, getting you fun, ready. Man. I've enjoyed listening to you as well tonight, <laughs> mate. Thank Brilliant. you, Brendan. Thank you, James and Gillian. Our action reporters have been trackside listening to BT. Uh, here's what the manager said. We got a good goal. After we scored, we went into our shells and we got a bit negative. They're a counter-attacking team with quality. Who can hurt you? The ball kept going back to Joe for no reason. So did you spot that, Stephen? The ball was going back to the keeper too many times with no good reason? Or is he beginning there to refer to the, the goal? Yeah, we looked agitated during the game. We looked frustrated with something. It might be that. It might be that... I mean, he likes to play forward, foot, forward thinking football. And if boys are taking the easy option by going back the ways, your goalie's always on. But sometimes managers don't like the ball going back all the time. So he definitely, by his standards, looked a bit more agitated than normal. John, he said, yeah, you heard it, a good goal. After we scored, we went into our shells, got a bit negative. As a player, and a great player, how, how, how does that happen? Well, when Celtic scored, it, it was almost like they were very overjoyed. They got mm. back in the game uh, and they just switched off. They switched off for the second goal. They scored a second goal. And then and then all of a sudden, I think that gave them confidence. You know, all of a sudden, they get a lift from that. They start passing it. Everybody wants to get on the ball. Um, and then Celtic found they couldn't quite get a foothold in the game then. You let a Leipzig come and score. So all of a sudden, their crowd goes, oh, we've just conceded a goal, it's 1-1. All of a sudden, they're back up behind their team again. So it becomes difficult then. Listen, thanks very much for your question. Thanks to everyone who's joined us here this afternoon, this evening, tonight, into tomorrow morning. No, there won't be celebrations tonight. But I'm hearing John Harson, Stephen McGinn saying reasons to be optimistic of that third position Celtic could well get it John St- Stephen <laughs> yeah, I was going to go with John yeah. no 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 I was thinking John Harrison <laughs> Stephen again <laughs> yeah well one positive right away is Real Madrid have taken an early lead against Shakhtar and um, I think every Celtic fan will be switching over to that game and hope that Real Madrid take 15 points and then lose to Celtic in the Bernabeu Stephen, thanks so much for joining us. Just been Enjoy brilliant that. on twice in the last week and tonight. Hopefully you'll come back and join us. And good luck this weekend up at Peterhead. Thanks, Bob. And also with the baby. Isn't he doing well? Looking well, having a, a two-week old. And big bad John. There's nothing bad about them, is there? <laughs> <laughs> you hey, boys, by the way, you've all played your part tonight, all the Celtic fans. It's not the night that we all wanted, but great, by the way. Great to have you on as well with your opinions. Well done. Thank you, John. You'll be back on with us in the Go Radio Football Show. So we're back on air on Go Radio at five o'clock tomorrow. That's Thursday, which it'll soon be uh, um, with. It's going to be Kenny Miller and Andy Walker. So another good double act. John Hartson, thank you so much. Stephen again, and everyone here. Thanks, thanks to Chris. Thanks to James and everyone who joined us. We'll see you soon. That's it from us. Celtic losing 3-1, but could still be in third position. From all of us here, with Steen and the Radisson Red... Good night. Euro Nights from the Go Radio Football Show with Steen. Home check, providing peace of mind for your home with multi-service care plans. As one of Scotland's leading mechanical and electrical contractors, Steen delivers a wide range of mechanical, electrical, plumbing, heating and renewable solutions for your home or business. Our specialist team provides our clients with the highest quality service and installations, giving them peace of mind and confidence to return in the future. So, for all your mechanical and electrical projects, regardless of size or complexity, make Steen your partner of choice. For more information, visit steenelectricalsolutions.co.uk.